for, you know, how many weeks now? <sighs> okay. Loud music. Thank you, Trevor. We're live now. Let me fix one more thing. Okay. So, the exact same live stream setup I've been using for weeks now, all of a sudden, one of my OBS scenes just decided it wasn't going to work. No idea. We are live. That's what matters. The issue is dumb and gone. So, uh, I turned down the music. It should be down now. App on your TV is being a dick. Damn. Ay, ay, ay. This stuff is nothing if not fun. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Let's work on the Cookie Cad V0.2. That's what we're doing today. Music's off now. I turned it down. I never know what a good volume level for, for the music is. Um, 30? No. I feel like that's probably pretty good. Just a little background noise going on there. Okay, today we're working on the uh, Cookie Cad. Vishal, welcome! Got the Cookie Cad V0.2 once again. And I think we're going to work on the mini stealth burner today. Um, there's no correct volume level. Somebody will always want it higher or lower. You are not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, we're going to work on the mini stealth burner, I think. Last stream, we ended up putting the back panel in, starting to. Uh, the 1440p now. It's only a 1080 stream. Weird. Um, they must be upsampling. Anyway, mini stealth burner, I think, is where we're going to go now. I didn't want to get into it last stream because I wanted to wrap up. I think that's why I want, didn't want to get into it. I hope that's why I didn't want to get into it. I don't remember. We're going to find out real quick. So, mini stealth burner design for this project. Uh, I think this is the one that I'm going to go with. I printed a, I printed a bunch. Hybrid Robotics, welcome. I printed a bunch of these to get a color one that I like. Gotta find all the pieces in here that go with the mini stealth burner. There's a carriage, there we go. the roller carriage. Oh, I have extrusions in here. Not really that necessary. It's a lot of mini stealth burners. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There's our mid housing, extruder mid body. Double check, I don't have any other missing pieces. There's a better lever. That's a better lever. And our back piece. I think this is the right one for the. I'm gonna hold on to that. I think that's the right one. Look how you're building a tool changer. Yeah, <laughs> it does. You're right. I'm all ready for a cookie cad tool changer. Uh, I think that's everything we have and need for right now. I'll keep this close at hand. Maker Viking, welcome. Congrats on breaking the uh, dimensional barriers of 3D printing. That's hot. I'm gonna hold off on that for a minute. YouTube's being weird. YouTube's playing a uh, uh, an April Fool's uh, April Fool's joke, probably. Ah. Not sure how many tool heads you'd be able to get in a V zero. Um, probably. I mean, you can get two. Get two side by side and have the the tiniest worthless IDEX on the planet. I'm pretty sure it would be an IDEX that could only print 20 millimeter calibration cubes and that's it. But that's something. Let me adjust this camera angle quick. Gene, you should get up here. Baby girl. Come on, baby. Everybody. Oh, I know. She was having a, a snooze. She's having a snooze. 
There is such a thing as a V0 IDEX. It exists. Dueling zeros, yes. I, I meant within the volume of the existing chamber. Uh, that's a, you know, a significantly wider frame. Yeah. I know, I woke you. I'm sorry. People, people want to see you. Yeah, April Fool's on printables this year is a uh, printable vinyl record. Vinyl. Hi, baby. Okay, so we've got mini stealth burners here and Jean. Hi, baby girl. So I printed a bunch of these because with transition filaments, you know, transition rolls, you only get certain colors the way you want them. This was probably... This was probably one of the first ones I printed, and uh, as such, I didn't get nearly as much color transition on this housing as I wanted. Uh, April Fool's joke or not, it's an awesome idea. That's kind of like their, their hex filament. Like, well, that wasn't really an awesome idea. It was just fun. Um, so this is the one I think we're going to go with. It's got the dark magic on the face, and then it's got the... Jean's why we're all here, really. I'm aware of that. That's why she's here. <laughs> she was snoozing, or else I would have let her just keep on sleeping, but her audience awaits. Um, this is the one we're going to go with, I think. I printed two or three of these. Probably looks like maybe at the same time. I don't remember. But this has the really solid, covers all three colors that are really in place on this Cookie Cad Unicorn ABS. So that's the one we're going with. Uh, as I said, I've got, I've got a pile of parts, and Cookie Cad Nathan sent me uh, a fresh spool of unicorn and a fresh spool of dark magic. So I will probably have one, if not two, full printed parts kits for a V Zero available for giveaway. Maybe when we get to like the test and tune, maybe we can give away one on stream, and I'll give away the other on Twitter, or something like that. We'll figure it out. Hi, baby. So. Oh, Hybrid Robotics. Uh, did you just join as a member? Thank you so much. I thought you were one already. I could be wrong. Thank you. Memberships are available on um, on the Mandic Labs channel now. So, Jose, welcome. Thank you for the support. I just see the notification in my, my dashboard here. Hell if I know. Yeah, Bean, I know. I know. You, yeah, I know. I woke you up, so I, I should play with you. Chom, thanks. <laughs> um, okay. Morning, morning. You just joined. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for the support, Hybrid Robotics. Anybody else who wants, we've got multiple tiers of support available on the Mandic Labs channel. You, too, could be a supervillain. Or a chief science officer. Uh, oh, the guide learn. I knew there's a piece missing here. I'm missing one piece of this whole setup. Sending, oh, you're sending me one of the uh, quantum kinematic printers for unboxing. Um, do I need to worry about spatial anomalies and will it increase or decrease the size of my studio? Like, can we communicate through it since it'll be... Each machine is entangled with the rest, right? It's like the ultimate cloud service with a quantum printer. Every single printer is entangled with the rest. So you... So you... Is that better or worse than a cloud service? I don't know. <laughs> Am I liable if I create a black hole? Listen. These are questions we just don't ask support piece out of this. I do love that a lot of designers are getting to creating inbuilt supports. I need to start playing with that more myself. Just make sure you send it to the right printer. Yeah. Studio same, stays the same size, but mass increases 10 times. Um, that could be concerning. Double T in the house. Welcome. We got double T here. Glad you can make it in. Anybody see the uh, the post double T uh, shared with me yesterday? That I put it on Twitter. The early April Fools. 
A quantum printer. It can print and not print at the same time. Gene, you are a spe Now, I think Gene's going to have to review the quantum printer, right? Like, that's, that's how that works, right? I put her in a box with the printer, and she is both reviewing it and not reviewing it at the same time. Inexpensive prints, welcome! It's a cat thing, you're right. Definitely a cat thing. Okay, uh, the guidler's missing. So I am missing one printed part here in my pile. Oh, I was missing this piece too, actually. Two parts. Two parts. I might not have printed it. I might have to send it to print real quick, which is not a big deal. I feel like I... Oh, jeez. I am covered in cat hair already. Why is Gloop not available anymore? What do you mean Gloop's not available anymore? I stayed up late last night drinking. Somehow I ordered a Kraken. Well, were you drinking Kraken? Like, because that just makes sense. Then. Uh, I do not see a Guidler. I'm going to print a new one quick. Oh, just seeing your mug. What, the Gloop mugs? Are the Gloop mugs not available anymore? Uh, we managed to get uh, Schrodinger's printer. We've managed to get most of the anomalies, so if one happens, it'll be an anomaly. <laughs> oh, Maddie, LDO sending you parts goodies this week. Awesome. Uh, camera is surprisingly good at focusing on you and Gene at the same time. Fun fact, uh, my camera is not on autofocus. What I do for live streams, if you're familiar with camera settings, for live streams, I set my um, f-stop quite high. So I close down my aperture so that I have a lot more depth of field. Um, so a lot more things are in focus. It doesn't give that like bokeh, beautiful look, but it'll, it's better that you folks can see what's happening during a stream, so. I'd rather you folks can see what's going on versus like having the prettiest image I could. Um, Guidler, I need to reprint that. I need to print that part. One missing part I gotta print. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Bring Orca Slicer over here. Oh, um. Robot Overlord, you're not that late. We've barely gotten started so far. we barely gotten started. Uh, I released a design. Let me share this with you quick. Screen share. Oh, screen share looks like it's overblown. Let me fix that. Fit to screen. That's not helping. Okay. Why are you doing this? Transform. Fit to screen. There we go. Uh, I released the, here are the best streams, by the way. Appreciate that. Thank you. Now, are you talking to Gene? You're carrying on a conversation I'm not aware of. Um, oh, my uh, my camera overlay is missing, isn't it? Boop, 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 boop. Uh, I see why. My camera overlay is missing because the way I had to fix the stream was to add, I had to re-add my capture card completely live just we're doing it live it's fine it's fine uh getting a sunlu s8 pro they're blowing them out at a irresistible price cool i released my hex design um my hex burner design so which one's the full housing this one ah i don't have multiple filaments let me add a second one There we go. My hex burner design, I released it on um, Thangs today. So this is available for download. I'm going to film a video later about how I do multicolor printing like this with a single uh, nozzle. So it's a one nozzle setup, easy multicolor designs. I'll be doing a video about it for the Mandic Labs channel here probably later today. Um, anyway. This can all go away because I need to print the Guidler. No plans to do a tool changer setup at the moment. Um, I don't have any plans for that right now. 
I got way too many other projects on my slate uh, to mess with that. Got to find where the heck my files are. I need to do better. I need to work on some file organization for all of this. Guidler, that's what I'm missing. I'm going to print a couple of them. Oh, no, wait. That's the Guidler. I need the Guidler latch. The shuttle. Okay, they call it the shuttle. That's what I'm missing. Clone it. Print a couple of them. Let's slice this live. It is a little tricky, and I'm gonna. It's gonna be, you know, I gotta explain the tricks of doing it a little bit. But uh, dial in some settings here. Get to Voron spec settings. But uh, it'll it'll. It'll be interesting for those folks who aren't familiar with how to do it. Void crossing walls, small area compensation. I need to retune my profiles. They've added so many nice features to... Um... Uh, yeah, luckily it's like a five minute print. You're right. Uh, they've added so many lovely features to Orca Slicer lately that I, I am going to slow way down though because these are small parts, so I want low layer times. Uh... Dope. Slow down for curled perimeters. 40, 30, 20, zip. Okay. Uh, move them farther apart. That way they can cool a little more as it moves. That's not a terrible idea. I'll just slow things down. Uh, that's not a bad idea at all. Further apart. Uh, I generally like to keep them close because then part cooling kind of helps between the two. You know, as it's cooling one, it'll cool the other. <laughs> Join the stream and you see a monster of a cat. She's actually a pretty small cat. She's not the smallest, but she's our smallest cat, that's for sure. Okay, sending it to print. Check my Voron. Uh, it had cooled down. So, okay. Now we can get back to the project. And Gene. All right, all right. So I got those parts printing. Do I have instructions up? No, I don't. Sorry that I keep going black. Give me a second here. I have to recreate scenes as we're going because my capture card just isn't working through the existing OBS setup for whatever freaking reason. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to share instructions. I'm just going to work. <laughs> That's ugh, so frustrating. This is the problem with OBS. I don't understand it. And it's not OBS's fault, realistically. It's, it's using a dozen different pieces of technology tied into one piece of software. Some reason today, my... Uh, Sorry, Gene. My HDMI switcher decided that the scene it's existed on forever is no longer the scene that it wants to work with. So I had to completely re-add it. So now every time I switch to a new scene, I have to re-add it again. Just dumb. Anyway. Okay, he press insert time. You gonna help? You probably shouldn't be breathing in ASA fumes, kid. Or these are ABS fumes. various sections of this. Uh, I don't think any of these get inserts. This gets a hex, uh, M3 hex into this body. Boop. Yeah. Oh, thank you, very helpful. M3 hex into that. Yeah, all right, Bean, you gotta go for a minute. I know, I know, she wants to stay. But if I'm gonna be using a hot soldering iron, and pressing in uh, heat press inserts into ABS. I don't want her on the desk breathing that. I don't want her on the desk breathing that. I know, baby girl, I'm sorry. I know. I don't know where I put all the hardware for this kit. I'm get the... the uh, what electronics am I going to put in? I'm going to be putting in a... I decided originally I intended to put in a Pi Zero 2W, uh, but I've switched up. I'm going to be putting... Uh, 
I'm going to be putting in error. A Pi 4, sorry. I'm gonna be using an SKR Pico, a Big Tree Tech SKR Pico, which comes with the kit, and then I'm going to put in a Pi Zero. Uh, not Pi Zero, a Pi 4. Reason being, uh, I wanna put a touch screen on this. I want the WaveShare 2.8 inch touch screen, and you need the DSi connection for that. So you have to go. I wish the Pi Zero had a DSi connection. I just wish it did. It's plenty powerful for this machine. It just doesn't have DSi. Norton Tech, welcome. Where the heck did I, oh, I moved the, I moved the zero stuff out of my way. One second. Okay, got it all. There's my fresh spools of cookie cad filament. Fresh spools of cookie cad abs and a, a new spool of unicorn and a new spool of dark magic um does the skr pico use an rpi pico it uses an rpi pico processor an rp2040 the processor on the board is an rp2040 that's why it's called the pico processor is a pico processor so uh SKR Pico and RPi4, yes. Gonna taste it and make sure it's, it's see if it's made out of cookies. Uh, I'm trusting, I'm gonna trust that it's not. I'm just gonna go with it's not and we'll go there. I dislike this part when you, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. This tab that stands up in the mini stealth burner really needs to be like pulled back just a hair because when you press in this insert, my insert tool is going to rub on this and melt the plastic a little bit. Not the greatest. Does it qualify as freshly baked filament? Uh, no, not until after printing. Not until it's printed. Uh, hardware, where did I put all the hardware for this? Here it is. There's all my heat inserts. Not that I don't have a whole bunch. Why not a dragon burner? I don't like the way a dragon burner looks. I think it's hideous. <laughs> I think it's just a box. Um, I understand it performs better, but I honestly don't care. The mini stealth burner performs just fine for my printing applications. I primarily print ABS and ASA inside of the a V0, and that's what I intend to do with this. I am gonna be putting auxiliary part cooling into this machine too. I have a 7530 fan on the way. Uh, probably later today, I'm going to print the auxiliary part cooling duct. I've got one of them here. I don't know what I did with it, but I've got an auxiliary part duct for a, a V0 here. So it'll, it'll go on the side and blow across the bed. So, yeah. All right, heat insert time. Take the table up a little bit. Yep, there's my insert tool rubbing against that flange I was talking about. This one has enough space, but that one doesn't. It's, it's almost difficult to get it to go in straight. As a result, as I drop my soldering iron, exactly why I didn't want Gene up here. Uh, I would do a Nevermore, uh, the V6, because you can use that for cooling, but you don't always want cooling. That's the problem. Um, you don't always want the additional cooling that fan airflow adds. So on this, I would always recommend a straight. We are going to be putting a, a, a Nevermore in here as well, but I don't want that airflow. And it's so minimal. The airflow that comes out of the uh, the Nevermore is negligible, but enough that it could cause print issues when you don't want airflow. So, have to balance that. Great color on the filament. Yeah, talk to Cookie Cad. They're the ones making great colors. Uh, okay. Oh, I missed one insert in here. There's one down in there. Pew. 
one more. This one is also really close. Get in there. Cool. Cool. All right. That piece is done. Ah. Setting up TMC, uh, your V0 with uh, SKR Rat TMC 2240 and an uh, uh, Orange Pi 2.0. Cool. Uh, soldering iron wire is, is so thick, are we getting in the way? Yeah, that is a problem. That is a problem. Why is your, is that thing ever going to go? 2.4 is just about to start. Brent, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, this separator piece gets inserts in the top. Uh, that recess spot. And then the bottom. I'm almost certainly going to ditch this. Uh, have you looked at zero filter? Thinking about using it um, instead of micron or for your instead of Nevermore. The one thing I like about uh, zero filter is it would allow for dual auxiliary fans. So you could run zero. Uh, you could run the zero filter, and um, then you would still be able to run auxiliary fans on both sides of the chamber. I like that. Problem for me is my hex panel. It's this dumb reasoning, but it's a reason. The zero filter mounts, <coughs> excuse me, at the back of the chamber back here, which even with the auxiliary part fan, I, it might be rather difficult to reach. Uh, because of how much the auxiliary fan is going to stick out. I think it might be an interference issue there. I haven't mocked it up together. Uh, the second issue is... Where did I put my hex panel? The one I'm going to use anyway. Well, here's one of them. So the other issue with the zero panel. Connor, welcome. Zachary, welcome. Uh, the other problem is my hex panel. So... The zero filter mounts like right here inside the chamber. And then my chamber thermistor port is right there. So that's, I know it, it draws air in from the top and blows it down, but I feel like it's gonna create air circulation right next to the chamber thermistor and maybe throw off the readings from it. And also the zero filter would then block this cool looking design that I made. So I'm just not, uh, not sold on it for any of my projects. Looks like a great, set up for a lot of applications uh not for mine so honestly the nevermore is going to do perfectly fine i could probably honestly run the nevermore uh put it on the other side cable chain that's where the z cable chain is there's no room there it has to be on that side i could move the thermistor port but then i have to rework the design just for that and then i risk i risk the cable chain contacting that i could probably get it i think it is above print height but i don't know i'll see how popular uh, zero filter becomes and maybe i'll retweak and make a zero filter version of my hex panel but for my my purposes i'm just going to go with uh nevermore uh, what rock playlist do you use for streams? It is from backingtrack.gg. Backingtrack.gg. It's music made for streaming. It would satisfy my OCD if the chamber thermistor was in the middle. Yeah, but then it would be behind the, the lead screw. Uh, and also, it's also where the wiring runs. You have to think about where that thermistor is because that thermistor sticks straight out of the back of the panel. Um, so it, it's it got to be placed in a, in a logical spot. If the entire wiring harness for the tool head has to go past it, not ideal. Um, Love the color scheme. We all know the most important part of a 3D printer. Totally. Aesthetics matter. I understand that I'm often trading off 
some functionality for aesthetics, but okay. That's, I'm a content creator. If my machines look like garbage, nobody's going to want to watch my content. I mean, that's not necessarily true, but I'm sticking to it. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, an F2 by 6 goes into here. Let me prep these parts up. What, not the LEDs? What about the LEDs? Look good, feel good, print good, yeah. Oh, Maker Viking, you became a member. Maker Viking and Doc, uh, DRK Lukavi, uh, both became channel members. Thank you so much. I don't get channel member notices on the screen in front of me, only over here. I'm sorry, uh, but thank you so much for the support. It is appreciated. Joining up the uh, channel memberships, appreciated. I believe that puts us over the number that sh channel members should now be appearing on the main channel, like page. Mm, view your channel. Mm, I don't see it, but uh, whatever. Do you think there's a difference using MGN 9 versus uh, 7? I'm going to be testing that. Don't flash firmware while drinking. I crashed a board last night. Oh, no. Oh, hopefully you can recover it. Um, I'm going to be testing that. So this machine, uh, the the Cookie Cat Zero here, has a high wind rail on the X-axis, uh, MGM7. Thank you, Maker Viking. I appreciate it. It also has the... Uh, let me switch camera angles and, and maybe show you a bit. Table down. So, uh, is there a PLA or PETG version of this filament? There is both to my knowledge. PLA, absolutely. In fact, I have a spool of the PLA here somewhere. Um, well, yeah, I do. Here's a couple spools of, uh, there's the unicorn PLA, and that's Mermaid, I believe. So, Cookie Cat has some lovely spools. Uh, I believe both of these colors are available in both PLA and PETG. There's a link in the description of this stream down below um, to Cookie Cat's filament. So, uh, okay, this has the Fizek CNC gantry on it, so the lightweight gantry. You can kind of see my hand through there. It's got the MGN nine, uh, MGN seven linear rail on it, and it has. It's not quite in focus. That's a better focus spot. Uh, and it has the CNC aluminum lightweight uh, carriage plate on here. So this is the exact same setup um, that I'm going to be running on my 0 0.2. 0 0.2, um, or my 0 0.1 that I'm converting to a 0 0.2 I'm running the same setup on that, but I'm going to be using an MGN9. The MGN9 should be in today, actually. Um, so I'll be able to compare the two. I'm going to be running... I think I'm most likely going to end up running the same hot end, carriage piece. Everything should be pretty much the same between the two, except for the extruder. So, And even then, it's pretty close, because my Zero has a Bontec LGX light extruder. Yeah, Bean. Yeah. She just came wandering in screaming. She doesn't talk to you folks much. That's the thing that kind of surprises me. She doesn't really talk on stream, but Jean is very vocal most of the time. Um, my 0 0.1 currently has a LGX light extruder on it. And I'm going to be using one of those printed... Let me pull it up quick. One of the ones that uses HGX... Uh, when will you back to the Trident? I'm waking on, waiting on parts for the Trident. Um, I had hoped to be back to it already, but I cannot rush. I can't rush the folks who are getting the parts put together for it because can't look a gift horse in the mouth and all that. Uh, so kind of just where I'm at. Uh, Two-factor authentication on Prusa. Uh, is that carriage the one that needs the M, uh, M3 4 boy, uh, 4.5s? This one isn't. It's the um, it's the nine mil or the MGN nine version that needs those. 
Since this one's an MGN7 carriage, it uses M2.5 screws, I believe, either M2 or M2.5. Um, the MGN9 version uses uh, the M3 by 4.5. I ordered some, Josh Show, or uh, Joe Show, thank you for stopping by. First, I'm seeing you in the chat, so. Um, I ordered some out of China. I ordered some titanium ones. We'll see if they work. I also ordered M4 or M5. I have M4. I ordered M5 as M3 by 5. So I can try a couple different sizes and just see which one seems best. Uh, Hector's waiting on me to let him know. He kind of forgot what one it's supposed to be at this point. Uh, and he wanted, I'm going to tell him which ones I find work so that he can then um, update the packaging and whatever. And that won't, that can be fixed. Uh, Proto extruder, there we go. Here's the extruder I'm probably gonna run on this build once I get it together. I'll take it back apart and swap out to this extruder later. So it's this, um, this one from NHCHIU on printables, Maker Mind Nexus, welcome. And it uses HGX gears, so the knockoff Bontech LGX gears. Uh, I was able to order a gear kit for like 15 bucks, less than that, I think, off of AliExpress. And I'm going to try this on, on this machine. And back to mainstream. Get back there. Tag this window to the side of the screen again. There we go. Damn it, I just lost YouTube. There's the stream. Ay ay ay. Technical difficulties day. Nuno, welcome! Uh, they make great extruders. I've used a couple of them. Awesome. It'll be my first time playing with it. I love the LGX extruder. I real I'm a fan of the LGX Lite. My only thing I don't love about the LGX Lite is Um Last Days was getting hard to catch live, so you're here now. Um, I like the lever that just goes to different tension settings. Totally like that, except sometimes I want to be able to tune in between the settings, you know, like TPU. I've had bad luck with the LGX light and TPU because you can't dial in the tension setting. You just have two settings and neither seems quite right. So yeah. Connor G, thank you for stopping by. Appreciate it. Have an awesome stream. We Hopefully we will. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Carrie. Just saw Carrie. Thank you so much for becoming a channel member as well. Thank you, Carrie, for the support. Uh, there's the screws I need. You want to come back up, baby girl? She's sulking down below me. Uh, upgrade to V2. I thought I think thought that's fixed on the LDX light. Uh, the V2 light, yeah, I think the V2 light does. SRT Devin, welcome. Um, I think that does. Does that add a third sensing uh, tension setting? It's still fixed settings. Um, oh, Jack, welcome. Jack Faxon in the house. Um, I think it's still fixed settings, but I'm not aware. I don't have any relationship with Bond Tech. Um, and. I can't really justify replacing a perfectly functional extruder. Like I just don't print TPU on my, on my 0 0.1. Otherwise the, the standard 0 0.1, uh, the standard V1 LGX light works perfectly fine. So, you know, it's one of those. You and Gene deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gene, Gene says meow. Right kiddo? Where are you going? Going to bed? Gene, come here. Come say thank you. There we go. Gotta get this one of the one of the little M2s into here for a uh, tension stop point inside the extruder body. Genie Bean, you wanna come up here, kiddo? Get that good and tightened in there. Come here. You can come back up. You can come back up. 
Yeah. You want to hang out? Someone has to pay for the dreamies. Just ordered some yesterday, so. <laughs> Just ordered some yesterday, so thank you. It's appreciated. Uh, okay, where was that? Instructions. Those are in. That stops in. The bottom inserts are in. Time to assemble the guidler. Wow, that part print. Those are almost done. All right, where's the extruder parts here, kiddo? Did you see them? Did you take them? Ah, I'm dropping screws. How am I gonna transport the 3D printers for the move? That is a good question that I'm not 100% sure of the answer on yet. Um, I'm largely intending, I think we're going to do a build video of building some crates on the Mandic Labs channel. We're probably going to build some crates. Um, should do, I'm definitely going to do a video on it. Uh, there's two things I've gotten, I'm going to definitely do videos on before we leave. Very carefully. Yeah. Uh, it's much easier to not disassemble them. Absolutely true. There's no way I'm disassembling because like nothing will ever really go back together right after that or then the time pallets and ratchet straps. The problem is I've, I've basically got to build a crate for each machine that's going, which does start to raise the question of are, are all of the machines going uh, because stacking inside of a truck like if if I just strap one of these machines to a pallet. Now there's no space above it that can be used. And then I don't want to put a pallet on top of like moving boxes. So I realistically need to build individual crates that each machine goes into so they can they can um, uh, stack in each other. Hit up Modbot on Vice, he just moved his stuff. Yeah, but he moved a pretty short distance. He just moved from one house to another in the same area. I'm moving completely across the country. So, um, which I learned yesterday, Daniel, actually, I was talking with him and he, uh, I realized, I learned he's not that far away from me where I'm going to be. I didn't realize where he is in like Idaho is actually pretty close to me. So relatively anywhere compared to our current proximity, bigger studio, hopefully a bigger studio. Uh, we're just moving across country. So hopefully it'll be a bigger one. Uh, where's the tool head in motion? Looking for my BMG gears. I don't know where I put them. I have a handful of sets, but... Where are you moving? Portland. Portland, Oregon. There's the extruder motor and leftover belts wrapped around it. Um... But yeah, the other video that I know I'm going to do uh, is a full studio tour. Um, a full studio tour. Yeah, oh, you're helping. <laughs> um, like an hour north of you. Cool. Welcome to the uh, best state. Awesome. Yeah, I, thank you for the help. Very appreciated. Um, uh, Nizo, Nizo, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Welcome to the stream. Hello. Um, very helpful, kiddo. Don't fall off the table. Lock of tool heads and gantries in place. Yes, that's absolutely a, uh, a thing. Uh, that's absolutely something I'm going to be looking at. A way to, like, block. I'll probably design a handful of, like, like, for each machine, I'll probably design some way of locking like the gantry in place, like a printed part that if that printed part cracks or breaks, it's not a big deal compared to the rest of the machine. So we're definitely going to, there's definitely going to be a video about that. Absolutely. About packing up the machines and how I'm going to safely transport them across country. And then like probably in a post report when we get to there to see like, how did they survive? Um, the other video is a studio tour, a full studio tour. Like 
showing the outside of the space. My studio is kind of weird and you will understand what I mean by that when it, uh, when the video does eventually go up. Obviously I won't be posting that until we are in Portland already, but, but that'll be coming yet this year. So a good, like real studio tour. Got our spacers for the Pico Billical. How do they survive and what could you do better? Yes, that's a good call. That's a good call. Why Portland? It's where my father-in-law lives. It's where my father-in-law lives and my wife wants to spend more time with her father while she can. Uh, printers you have with moving bed, I'd recommend setting them at the bottom. That's fair. Less leverage, wiggling them around. Uh, we need more 3D printer friends here in Portland. I need to hit up the folks at West 3D. I need to hit, hit them up. I haven't told them I'm moving out there yet. I don't see where the hell I put the BMG gears, so... Uh... Hybrid uh, hybrid robotics. You lived in Portland for 40 area for 47 years. Now you're in San Diego. My wife is from San Diego, and now we're going to Portland. So Portland seems nice if expensive. Honestly, compared to where I am, I'm in Philadelphia, and it's not cheap here. So you know, um, so far there goes a fan cable. Does she knock something off? Um, so far, we've been looking and we, we are finding better properties for what we're paying for where we are now. So, <clears throat> All right. yeah, I've got a full, I've got extras, thankfully. She's chewing on it. Eh. It'll be fine. San Diego's not cheap to live either. No, it's not. That, my uh, my mother-in-law is in Escondido. Why are you being a terror all of a sudden? <laughs> she just knocked a counter countersink bit off the table. Uh, uh, Portland isn't as bad compared to some other places in the country. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm. Uh, of the mindset of some people are like, oh no, Portland's gone to hell. Like my dad was giving me that nonsense uh which hey, whatever um but i live in philadelphia like i'm not i'm not concerned um but what was i gonna say oh my, my mother-in-law lives in escondido my wife mostly grew up in san diego and uh we are not moving to california just for the expense factor it's too expensive for us okay Oregon is gorgeous as a Canadian. I loved it. Very welcoming and love the outdoors. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot more outdoors stuff. You have nothing to be concerned about. Agreed. I, I you know, it's like when I went to Austin. I moved to Austin ugh, 15 years ago, something like that, Austin, Texas. And when I got there, uh, some gravity still works. Yep, she's testing. She's our, our science officer. Uh, she's one of the science officers, you know. Um... When I moved to Austin, I had somebody tell me, ah, oh, you know, that's the something about like, I was like, oh, I'm looking for, you know, properties over this way. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. That's kind of a rough neighborhood. And I was like, oh, really? How bad is it? I'm like, oh, no. well, well, like, you know, it, uh, this, this and that. Um, and I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm from Philadelphia, you know, just outside of like we got Camden, we got Philadelphia, Kensington. They were like, oh, now nah, you're fine. You can go anywhere. Like, yeah, your version of bad and mine are probably two different things. Portland's small. 635,000 people is still a small city. Totally. I mean, Philadelphia is millions. Uh, I was, you know, I'm shocked by like, you get out of Portland and it's just beautiful. Um, Philadelphia, we got so much sprawl. Like it's just, it's just city it just keeps going. 
Did you guys see the Voron Delta? Uh, Double T's in the house here somewhere. Connor's asking, uh, or was in the house here. Uh, Double T's the one who uh, who shared that with me, and I shared it with Twitter. Portland is uh, itself is small, but the metro area is a third of the population of the state. There you go. Yeah, I'm not sure what, where we're going to ask, uh, where we're going to ask, where we're going to land. Town I live in is like 40,000 people. Town I grew up in is 3,000 people. Think I think 500K to 750K is a good size city to live in. Not too many, but big enough to have the amenities. Totally agree. Is the Delta real or an April Fool's joke? It's an April Fool's joke that's also real. Like, it's not, it's not an official Voron project, the way I understand it, but it is a real printer, and it's working in my garage. You got to send me those files. I'm, you know, I'm looking around, uh, Double T, I thought about it after we talked last night. Um, I'm looking around, and I'm like, I bet I have the bomb, except for the rods, uh, for the effector links. Except for those, I bet I have, and the bed. Rogers working on a GitHub repo to make it public. All right. Um, I will send you links. Cool. I'm I'm wondering if I don't have the majority of the bomb already. Um, and if we couldn't just piece one together out of stuff I have left over. I'm really curious about that. Uh, Oh shit, it's the guy who did it. <laughs> one of the one of the people who did it, yeah. Uh, where'd I put Grease? Grease! Grease, Grease, Grease. You have a lot of options for style of where you're gonna be when it comes to Portland. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll chat at Rocky Mountain, definitely. Uh, R Mandala Roseworks made the bed, so they'll sell. Cool, I'll reach out to them. I still... I still owe them. <laughs> they sent me they sent me a kinematic kit for the uh, ultimate 2.4. I haven't gotten to yet, but oh yeah, what is the build volume on that? It looked like probably like 180. Mm, God, this tube! I've got to transfer this grease after this build to a better grease gun. Where can I find this delta? It's not public yet. You can find, I posted a video on, uh, on Twitter, a link to the YouTube video. Lancaster is almost a Philly suburb. Ah, uh, that's pushing it. <laughs> but uh, you're not the first person I've had heard say something like that. Oh my God, this tube will not push. Like I'm, I'm bearing down on this to get grease out of it. I don't know what's up with this. Come on. There we go. Just want to grease the bearings that are going in the extruder. I mean, technically where I'm from is a Philly suburb, depending who you ask. I think that's really pushing it, but yeah. Uh, Double T, if you want to share it, um, let me make you a moderator quick. Add as moderator. You can share a link now. You should be able to. You're in here discussing these projects with us enough. And like half the stuff I've been building lately has been revolving around your projects. So <laughs> I feel like that just makes sense. Pretty eyes. Yeah. Uh, the proto extruder doesn't fit the mini stealth burner, right? It, it requires the Sherpa mini type uh, housing. Yeah. There. Uh. Double T just dropped the link to the video of the Delta for those folks who haven't seen it. Maximum Bombastic. Hello. Welcome. All right. I got the gear, the idler extruder gear. Yep. You do you. Uh, idler extruder gear is in. Uh, the Delta is funny. I love how they're like, uh, April Fools in the Voron community is like, okay, cool, bomb. <laughs> yeah, I want the bomb. You're not using the Proto Extruder. I'm not going to use the Proto Extruder right now. 
I'm going to go to the proto extruder later. First, I'm just going to put it together as is. Uh, later, I'll swap it out to that. Like that you stream mostly during humane hours for the Europeans. Awesome. Honestly, like there's 117, 110, something like that people in here right now. We get a good turnout no matter what time of day it is. I was concerned about that, but uh, yeah, so. Try and do some different different times for different folks. She's licking the table. Hope you don't have anything small to ingest. Nah, she's just being silly. I wiped down the table yesterday. Good number, thank you. Uh, good number, uh, well done. Thank you. Honestly, like, Mandic, really? That's kind of what's shocked me most about this streaming on Mandic Labs is this channel is very small still. It's less than 2,000 subscribers. And we're getting, like, turnout numbers on the live streams that are as good as I was happy with on Mandic, really. If I had 100 concurrent viewers on a Mandic, really live stream with 40,000 subscribers, I was happy. So, like, we're getting viewer numbers on this channel with less subscribers that are as good. Uh, so I'm just like, thank you folks. Hit the like button. Thank you, Aaron. I always forget to say those things. <laughs> Hit the like button. Uh, channel memberships are a thing. Subscribe if you're not already. Share the channel with your friends. This is the second channel, so gotta get folks to find it. Okay, I gotta glue that nut in. I forgot. They tell you to do that now, and I have had problems with that in the past, so I will do that. Uh, I'd a thousand percent build that Delta. Uh, just let uh, FL Sun just let me know. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested. I said no more Vorons, and here we are. Uh, I have a V0.2 to build. Any rec any interesting ASA or ABS filament gra uh, gradient filaments you recommend? Not really. I mean, the only one is this unicorn. It's the only one I know of and or. Uh, care for like there are other ones but i i've got a strong hero abs here that's rainbow and i don't i don't like the way it looks it's kind of an ugly color combination in my opinion um i can grab it real quick it's like a dark gradient rainbow this is strong hero abs ah uh I don't know. It's it's okay. I just wouldn't want to make a Voron out of it. I thought about making a Voron out of this just for the ugliness factor, but yeah. Uh, is the X carriage made out of metal? Yes, it is an aluminum one from Fabrico. Yeah, that's the Fabrico Honey Badger carriage. <sighs> <clears throat> uh, have you thought about doing an ERCF V2 or another MMU? Um, I have a whole kit to do an ERCF1. Too dark. Yeah, I agree. I, don't, I think the colors won't look right inside of there. It'd be so dark. Um, I have a whole an ERCF kit here. And then I never got around to building it. And then V2 launched. So, Mad Cat, welcome. Um... I would like to build one. It's just not a pressing thing for me right now. My wants as far as multicolor have really dwindled over time. Uh, you know, I kind of like, I guess, burned myself out on multicolor on the on the bamboo. I don't know. I'm, I have more fun designing uh, multicolor setups that a wide array of people can use. Like the you know, layer height color changes or the single color nozzle, uh, like single nozzle color change setup. So I, I like designing those because they're one, a challenge to make them interesting still and work nicely. And then also a wider array of people can use them. So like, eh. Uh, didn't you win in the RCF V2 on a giveaway? No. Unless I won it and didn't know. Maybe it was another content creator. I don't know. I have, I have won one or like, actually the hot end that's going in the Trident, I won on a giveaway from Fetus, which was kind of odd to me. Oh, zombie hedgehog. Okay. 
Okay, that M3 nut is glued into here, and I gotta put a bearing in this. Ah, oh, shit, where are the bearings? I think I robbed the bearings out of this kit. Dang it. No, this kit didn't have bearings. Huh. Uh, there's a tension knob. I'm gonna need that. These are knockoff bearings, I'm pretty sure. Eh, knockoff bearings will be fine. Somebody streaming European times. Welcome, Noro Creative. Um, Mandic Labs might want to shoot out the PSA that if you're going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, remember to put your online name as well as your meat space name so creators know who you are. Very much so. Yes. I know that this is a problem that happens to me at every event where somebody from chat, from comment sections comes up and says hi and starts talking to me like I know them because uh, they know me. And I, I probably do know them from the comments, but I don't know their real name. Like, you know what I mean? Yes, very much so. Especially when they, they come up like, oh, hi, I'm Joe or whatever. And it's like their online name is like Beadblaster57 or whatever, you know? <laughs> like, oh, yes, when you say that, I know who you are. Daniel, d hello. Uh, I know you're into Core XY, but do you do some uh, old Cartesian style printers? I'm sure we'll mess with something Cartesian at some point. I've got one or two builds around that um, that might stick Cartesian, but yeah. Well, my real name is my online name. Fair, so is mine. So I got that going for me. When, that, when people come up and greet me as Mandic, it's my name. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> I get to walk up to everybody and say, hey, it's Tor. I will know who you are. <laughs> you come up to me and say, hey, it's Tor, I will know. Speaking of which, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, just to announce once again, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, I will be at the, um, I picked a name that was as generic as possible, John Smith was already taken, um, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, I will be at the Fabrico booth both days of the show. Um, I don't 100% know. You trolling? Is it really Mandic? It's really Mandic. The reason my main channel name is Mandic Really is because when I tell people my name is Mandic, they don't believe me. So then I have to say, no, really, my name is Mandic. So my online handle eventually evolved into Mandic Really because it's really my name. That's It always gets me when people are like, uh, oh, Mandy Creely because they don't want to say Mandic. I'm like, no, my name's Mandic. It's technically Mandish, or something like that. The proper, like, Croatian or Balkan pronunciation. Is that, that's not the Balkans. Sorry. Um, the proper Croatian pronunciation is, has, like, a ch, s, uh, s, h, c, h sound to it. James, welcome! I kept my original YouTube name from before uh, Google bought them. Funny, Mandic Really, uh, the Mandic Really channel name is still technically my original like YouTube handle name I had for it from back that in the day. Um, and in the original Klingon. Um, Big Trek fan had to do chief had to be a chief science officer. Thank you so much, Donald. I I thought I was hopeful somebody would get that reference. Uh, oh yes, Donald. Thank you so much for joining up as a chief science officer. Anybody who needs a scapegoat, you've got one right there. Thank you. And uh, Nora, uh, Nora, welcome as a chief science officer as well. Thank you for the support on channel memberships. It's greatly appreciated. Let me know how to pronounce your name so I don't butcher that, please. Uh, I, I'm thinking like Neura as in neurotic and or um, neural. So Neura, I'm assuming. Thank you for the support. Chief Science Officers joining in. 
That's correct. Awesome. Thank you for the support. It is appreciated. Okay, I've got the guide, uh, the latch piece or whatever, shuttle printed. Turned out good. We can put a heat press insert in it. Just one last one to do. I'm not gonna kick Jean off the table for one. She seems pretty settled there. Going to run CAN bus, not on this. I don't, I don't feel like dealing with CAN bus on V-Zeros. This is getting a Pico Bilical, um, just cause it's what comes with the kit. But for me, mostly on V-Zeros, I don't think it's worth the, the hassle to run CAN. All right, there's our insert. It <laughs> just try to get me off your human. Yeah, you're right. She does have that look now, doesn't she? Very loaf. Yes, she is. Uh, I designed a, a Ractuccino mug can holder a couple weeks ago. Cool. Need to upload it uh, at some point. I need to mess with more like... Uh, uh, the name came from back in BBS sysadmin days. I I forget what my name's back in the... Uh, no, I don't forget. My teen, like, user handle from, like, IRC days was uh, Sled Dog. Because I really love snowmobiling. I love it. Always have. So I went with a Sled Dog. Because, you know, dog. The 90s. <laughs> What colors have a trident? The trident is Polymaker Galaxy Blue, Polymaker Dark Gray, and Light Gray. Um, well, regular gray. Gray, Dark Gray, and Galaxy Blue. Memberships, yes, memberships are a thing here now. Bearded Bucket, uh, and here's one of those things. Oh! Granting uh, you uh, uh, giving out memberships. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see gifted memberships. Thank you very much, Bearded Bucket, for that. Appreciate it. Um, Bearded Bucket, always an excellent supporter, mostly through on Patreon. It's one of those I wish. One feature I wish that YouTube had is where I could like grant YouTube or uh, Patreon supporters memberships, so that there wasn't an overlap there but I don't have any control over that, unfortunately. Okay, now I can put together this. That needs to be a thing. It really does. Like Ruby was coming up with some ideas of like, like perks we could provide, but she was trying to create perks that we provide through my website. And I'm like, no, you're missing this. Like I can't, I can't give people access to these perks. <sighs> yeah. Just dumb things the way they operate. Like, I understand YouTube wants the money. They want the processing fees and whatever for, for memberships. But So I understand why they probably will never change that. I just wish they would. Push a bearing in here. People tend to, t tend to stick to one platform. Yeah, totally. Understandable. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I, and and it's, it's the ever-existent problem as a content creator, trying to move people from one platform to another. Like, I've got 680,000 followers on TikTok. I can't get them to watch YouTube. I just can't. <laughs> Put a dash of Teflon uh, lube in these bearings. Uh, Nora was just crazy. We had a 25 pair telco line pulled into the basement for modems and lines. Jeez. That in, that involved into an internet provider before that was a thing. That's that's some old school impressive. Uh, for example, we rarely use Twitch. Yeah, I have a Twitch and I. I've just kind of 
fallen out of using it because I don't like splitting up and, and trying different things. If and when I do, uh, if and when I do Twitch stuff, I really just kind of game or, you know, something that feels a little more uh, fitting to that platform. Okay. Bearings in, now the shuttle goes in to this. Thank you, Bean, you came at the perfect time. The part I needed was underneath her tail. <clears throat> oh yeah? Yeah, she's happy. She's just happy to be here. She's just happy to be here. Oh, Guidler goes in now. No hot tub streams. Maybe if we get a hot tub at the new house. I doubt it, but maybe. I use Twitch only to watch Hedgehog. Understandable. Understandable. I gotta clean this up a little bit where the tool bit into it when I was heat pressing. Annoying. That's the members only stream. <laughs> it's not a bad thought. It's not a bad thought. Ooh, I, I don't remember this, but I got the color on this fucking good. I don't know how I did that, but I got the color match on this part really like, cause you gotta remember these are transition filaments. So these prints are two separate parts, but the transition up here into this guide arm, which is a separate smaller piece. Uh, like it seems pretty seamless. I'm impressed. Cat house could be a hot, could have a hot tub clipper controlled heaters. Maybe that'll be a separate project. Can we, we can do a separate project with that, you know? Getting, I've been getting a lot. Has anybody else, uh, what if the hot tub was a 3D printer? Okay, now we're getting weird. <laughs> I watch Nero play games and Zombie Hedgehog on Twitch. That's about it. Yep. Lucky or good? That Either way, that was great. Uh, I'm going to go with Lucky. Julie, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Printing in the hot tub. Yeah, that, that could go. How could that possibly go bad? <laughs> how could that possibly go badly? Okay, now it's rear body time. This rear body sets down on here. This I didn't get a good transition on. This has like super stripey, but hey, whatever. A mm, little bit of a tight fit over these parts. Jean wants her spotlight. She loves the spotlight. She's got her spotlight. She's picked her spot out today. She says, this is mine. I will be here. First and last hot tub stream. <laughs> It'll make it into a time machine. There we go. Well, if we, yeah, if we use the, the, the Viking uh, printer, you're right. She is so pretty and she knows it. Don't you baby girl. Ugh. A little extrusion issue. This uh, ABS from Cookie Cad flows pretty well, so it's a little easy to over extrude. I don't think I had this part quite dialed in when I printed it. Okay, um, I think I put all the clamps back on the other side. I'm gonna grab a clamp real quick. This Uh, this is her way of saying she'll be seen if you don't give her her own camera. She's going to get her own camera eventually. What is she looking at? Nothing. She's staring into the middle distance. There's nothing over there that she hasn't seen a thousand times. She's just staring into the middle distance. She is a very... Uh, It gives us a good size comparison on the zero. Yeah, uh, she is a deep thinker. She's got a lot to think about. Ruminating on life, ghosts. I mean, this house, this house is uh, is built in the 1800s. Was built in the 1800s. So there's likely some ghosts around here. And there was a factory next door too, uh, and a dairy was on this site for some reason. 
this this site was a dairy back in the day of all things so uh there's probably a lot of things she could be seeing all right i'm just trying to chamfer these pieces just a little bit so they'll slip together a little nicer I think I got a little top layer over extrusion. The dimensions you cannot see. She's, you know what? Uh, Maker Viking, did you have Gene testing? Was she a beta tester for the, uh, for the, for the new printer? That could explain a lot of things right now. That could explain a lot of things right now. She's checking the printer through time. <laughs> Tom, you're late. Nah, we're... You're not late. We're just chilling. At this rate, I'm not sure what we're going to get done, but we're just chilling. Oh, is that... You interested in that? You want to get down? Monjen, welcome! And back to her spot. Welcome, welcome. The next studio, we definitely need a bigger workbench and like a section of it sectioned off just for Jean. How old is Jean? Um, six or seven? Somewhere around six or seven. I'd have to look. I'm bad with that stuff. Scotty, welcome. Einstein was the first. She had good feedback on some improvements. We need to get more people hitting the like button. Please do. We had a dog as well. Had uh, had him DNA tested. Poodle, Shih Tzu. Wow, a lot of stuff. Uh, Domino, you guys don't, you folks don't see Domino a ton, but Domino is a, uh, oh hell, she's a. Uh, Multi poo, Maltese poodle mix. Uh, Do you find a solution on the five, uh, four point five millimeter bolt issue? I ordered some four point five millimeter bolts out of China. Um, I ordered four point fives out of China. I ordered M three by fives off of Amazon, and I'm gonna see which ones fit better. Uh, if M three by fives work, uh, if they work with a shim washer or on their own. I'm going to tell Hector, and Hector's going to update the packaging. So, I heard multi-poo at first. I mean, she does that. Uh, so, there's that. So, Okay, let's get this together. Let's see if the chamfering did me any good here. Yeah. So, hopefully, hopefully one of those solutions gets me what I need. Oh, you got to go? Okay. Busy work to do. Don't let me keep you. Come on. Come on. Got places to be. Places to be, things to do. Have a bull mastiff. <laughs> I get multi poo landmines. <laughs> hey, don't claw the carpet. Uh, still going together a little tight. I'm going to grab a, a, a clamp real quick. Right back. All right. I use a clamp to suck this together. Ah! Drop the pieces. That's better. That's pushing it into where it needs to be. I have fish and my wife wants to get birds. Ruby's afraid of birds. Funniest thing, she tattoos birds all the time, but she's uh, not a fan of birds in real life. All right. Can I get this piece in now? Yes. There we go. Now the latch goes in. I hope this all fits in here. Yeah, there we go. Cool. 
All right, we're going together. Uh, birds are very sensitive to filament toxins. That's uh, that's good to know. We were never going to get any birds, but that is good to know for folks who are uh, who do, who are interested. That's important information. All right, I need M3 by 25s. M3 by 25s, first freaking ones I pulled out, like canaries, like mine canaries, makes sense. PTAV toxins in particular. Oh, well, if you're printing with, uh, printing with non all metal hot ends. Pixel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Birds are mostly air, so many VOCs are rarely are really dangerous. Understandable. Things I didn't know. I mean, like I I understood the uh, canary in a coal mine thing, but like the the overall concept, I guess, escaped me a bit. Uh, is Ruby coming to Rocky Mountain? Nope. Oh <laughs> well, she be bringing gear now. No, she's not coming. Nope, she's not coming. Awesome color choice. Thank you. Thank uh, Cookie Cad for coming out with awesome color choices. Would have supported some of her art. Thank you. Now, she's um preparing for the move. She's going to be working a lot. In the next couple of months like she's already got the next she's got every saturday and sunday for the next six weeks i think booked already um so yeah trying to save for the move so she's working more going to be working more wish you were coming to rocky mountain but sadly no nah Sorry to hear that, Maker Viking. I mean, it's an awful trip for you, I'm sure. Mitch, welcome! We got Mitch in the house. Should probably keep my eye on chat over here. So I can see when folks join as members and such, because I keep missing that. Rocky Mountain's gonna be fun. What are you bringing to Rocky Mountain, Mitch? Bringing one of the backpacks or? My artist transitioned to personal trainer and only tattoos for special people. Interesting. Building a new backpack. All right. Looking forward to seeing that. All right. Guidler is free to move. Latch is free to disengage. Uh, this pen screwdriver, uh, electric screwdriver. Yeah, it'd be way too expensive. Understandable. You should try to come to Smurf. Uh, Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Festival, Manchester, England. That ought to be easier for you, I'd assume. Um, this is a uh, iFu. I do I have it linked in the comments or in the description? I don't know. I don't. Let me drop it in there quick. Uh, it's like a no-name Amazon one. It's not strong, but it's like thirty dollars, and it's great for just running screws in. Are all of your tattoos done by Ruby? Ruby has never tattooed me, actually. Actually, Ruby has never tattooed me. Uh, she's going to sometime soon, but yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a minor point of contention in our marriage. Dropping it in the... There we go. If it was snap on, it'd be like 500, yeah. Uh, she does not currently have a shop lined up yet. Uh, she's got a good idea of who she's going to reach out to and see if they will take it, will, uh, will bring her on. Um, but uh, she does not currently have a shop lined up yet. She also isn't too worried about it, so. My girlfriend's the only person to tattoo me. Huh. Too much torque, gotta be careful. Eh, see, that's that's the thing. Like, there's a point where 
where torque can be a problem with those things. I, I like I like to torque by hand and I like that it just runs screws in. It's good for that for me. Get some US companies to fly them over. Maybe next year we'll work on that. Maybe we can we can do a do a community fund or something to get some folks over for these shows. I gotta figure out getting, I gotta figure out how the heck I'm getting to. So it should be plenty of good shops. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's Portland. There's plenty of shops. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, she also started tattooing in Portland. She lived in Portland previously. Um, uh, is your chin scar an accident or body mod? It is a body mod. My chin scar is a body mod. Um, she started tattooing in Portland, so she's got a lot of contacts there already. Bless me. Thank you. 1.5 millimeter grubs love to strip. Yeah. That screwdriver in the UK is 60 pounds. That's silly. I don't know who the heck's calling me, but they'll, they can wait. Heck of an import freaking markup there. It's only $30 in the US, which moving a shop's gonna be nuts. It's not gonna be fun. Stupid import fees, same thing in Canada. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Dragon Burner. Nah, we're running mini stealth burner. Not running Dragon Burner. Moving, where are you going? Uh, Portland. Your car warranty is about to expire. <laughs> uh, Portland, Oregon is where we're headed. I got an RFID implant. It's the only bottom model I'd do. Or you would do or have done. I know uh, that Amy Double D has her Tesla key in her hand or something, right? Or did. What a cup. Where do you buy it? 3D Gloop. It's from the folks at Gloop. Gloop. The makers of Gloop. So, uh, glue for your 3D prints. Uh, Amy WD did get her Tesla. Yeah, uh, my buddy actually did that for her. A friend of mine was the one who put that in for her. So, Pineapple. My buddy Pineapple. Okay. I have this backwards? I got this gear backwards, yep. Good thing I looked. Community marathon stream. That's a fun idea. That's a fun idea. We'll see about uh, when, once we build up a little bit and uh, keep rolling. Kind of got to fund my own existence for now, but but I like that idea. Um, question to chat. When upgrading your heater to run a volcano nozzle instead of normal V6, using the same temperatures, have you found the need to increase your hot end heat sink? cooling um i haven't but what i have generally found is uh, a volcano can usually run a little bit cooler uh on the same materials a few degrees at least cooler so maybe you're overheating a little bit <clears throat> would be my thought how good are the cats and doggo at travel they both get really work they all get really worked up for the first little bit and then they kind of settle in so i'm not too worried about that honestly We'll see. I'm worried. What I'm worried about is the days of it. I'm not worried about like the the just travel portion, but uh, the like little bit, like day by day is what I'm worried about. I don't like how that's lined up. I feel like this is like too deep. Need to get a bunch of people in your area and do group buys. Yeah. That's a good idea for those hard to get in the things. Uh, where are my calipers? 
<clears throat> I feel like this gear is is just a little off. How many days are you taking to drive? I'm figuring on a week, but I have no idea. Uh, I, I haven't planned it that far yet. That's part of the problem is I would I would take my time with the drive a little more if it wasn't for the animals. So like, I'd love to stop and like collaborate with some companies and uh, other creators across the country on the way there, but I can't I can't do that to the animals. So we tried to figure out like an idea of how to um, how to like fly and get everybody there, and then like Ruby can stay out there, and then I can go. But we just don't. Uh, no, do you have a new layout yet? We don't even have a house yet, so no, nope, no new layout yet. No one to pet sit. Not really. Not really here. Um, we, we do. But they usually house sit. Our friends who pet sit usually come and house sit. And if we're moving out of the house, you know. <laughs> I don't know where I put my calipers. Surely Jean is going first class. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, she is the star, after all. Where the hell are my calipers? Studio's a disaster. I don't know why I did, but they're right in front of me. Mic dead? Uh, interface says I got audio. Hello, hello. Yeah, seems to be good. Um... Uh, do you have any plans to do true multi-material stuff? Yeah, I'd love to. I really want to build a tool changer of some kind. I do. I do want to build a tool changer of some kind. Um, yeah, see if anything, this says it should go deeper. Audio's there. Cool. Um, I want to build a tool changer of some kind. Be right back, stupid computer. All right, we'll be here. Um, I want to build a tool changer of some kind. I really want to play with multi-material. I do. I really want to play with multi-material. I'd love to mix TPU and other harder materials, but what would that multi-material project be? I don't know for sure. Um, the only one I have in mind right now is Black Box, I think. I don't want to build a like a, a Voron changer system, um, like a stealth changer or tap changer or whatever. I don't want to do that um, because I want to get away from building so many Vorons. I'm building so many of them that... I need to build some other stuff. Uh, ERCF and Enrage Rabbit. Um, I've got the parts to build an original Rage Rabbit. Uh, Enrage Rabbit. Oh, not the not the printer, but the things you'd be printing. I, I don't. I honestly don't know. I just want to have the capability so I can like. It's one of those things without the capability and without learning it and seeing how the application works out in real world i don't really know what my application is i know something i could think of okay something i can think of like my dad's truck uh the c10 build um knobs for the dash i could 3d print knobs for the dash but if i could like have a an asa knob with a tpu grip on it that would just be like another level of like nice touch you know what i mean um that's that's one of the things I've mostly thought about is like rubber rubber TPU overmolded on on prints so like a, a screwdriver handle but has TPU on the outside of it uh, for better grip or at least TPU sections or something I don't know Annex Trad uh, Rack MMU I've heard great things about that. I have heard great things about that one. Clean up a little over extrusion here. Get these parts to fit a little, a little happier. Uh, I do think multi-material is where 3D printing is heading for hobbyists. I think it's where it's heading in general. Uh, Something with Igus filament for sliding. Oh, that's a good idea. Like a a slider face or something. I could come up with a few ideas for that, actually. Um, 
some mechanical applications where an additional support piece would uh, would provide. Hard to explain. In my head, I have a few thoughts on that. Phoenix does look fun, but another Voron. Yeah. If I have the space in the next studio, maybe we'll build a Phoenix. But I don't know. The next studio is going to be pretty... We'll see. I gotta decide. I gotta decide everything that's going. I gotta decide what machines are going and what aren't. And that's gonna be a hard decision because there's a few that I'm like, Ugh. yeah, I don't want to get rid of, but kind of makes sense. Not makes sense. Ah, it's hard to explain. Will the SV? Uh, will the new Soval SVO8 Mandic flash sale? Um. Will the SVO8 be uh, multi-material? I don't think it'll be multi-material. I think it'll just be a, a Core XY, so bamboo-ish clone. It looked to me like the... the I, I have zero... I have no contact with Sobol whatsoever. I don't think they've even ever emailed me um, at all. Uh, the pictures that I saw of the like announcement kind of looked like a... Uh, Uh, 2.4, like a flying gantry. Over 100 reviews on a printer. It's not even released. Yeah. Bamboo. Prusha print, uh, clones are out. Bamboo clones are in. Yeah. Um. Uh, sorry, back there. I saw that question from Julie. Julie, you asked. A little off topic, but spools of filament in your background made me wonder, how much filament do you had if you have to get, uh, have if you had to guess? Lander, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, seems like a lot of the engineering aspects of 3D printing are getting lost in the crowd of helmets and cosmetics. Eh, it happens. Yeah, unfortunately. Oof. Trying to press these pieces together. There we go. This back housing is being a little, a little tight. Fit over the little pegs. They could use just a little more clearance. Clearance, Clarence. Anyone made a Core XY bed slinger? I don't see why it couldn't be done. Um, filament. How much filament do I have? Uh, Lewis. Yeah, that's. I called that out on Twitter. They're doing it on Twitter as well. That's what a uh, tour is referring to. I called them out on Twitter about that. They're sending people to their product page for the SVO8 to get a chance to get it get a machine and the only way to leave a comment is to leave them a positive review i mean i guess you could leave it a negative review but they're probably not gonna get people uh i like the printers but the latest marketing stunts put me off yeah um how much filament do i have over 200 kilograms uh i have over 200 kilograms i don't know exactly uh let me grab the ob spot right now i'm not using it i haven't used it yet have i Obsbot angle. I think it's staring. Yeah, it's looking the completely wrong direction right now. Let's try this. Uh, focus. There we go. Yeah, over there is a hundred some spools of filament. A uh, hundred some spools, and then obviously all this too. And then uh, you probably won't be able to see this. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, just to, just out of view to the right there, behind that light, there's a, another rep rack with a handful of spools on it. Streaming cam's cool. I, this thing is so much fun. This gives me so much freedom to just sit here and... Oh, tracking's on. I didn't realize. Tracking's on. That's why it was staring at the cable. It lost track of me, and it was like, I'm going to go look at something else. Um, So that's why it got confused. All right, I'm going to turn tracking off. I just use it for the pan tilt zoom as much as anything, and it's it's handy. Uh, did I use anti-backlash springs on the Trident build? Uh, no. No, they're just regular palm nuts. I did not use anti-backlash. I'm going to try it like that for now and see how I feel about it later. You could print a whole rainbow. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. Okay. 
we have tracking cameras in our boardroom and it's hilarious when they go wrong. It's funny. The thing just goes nuts when it does when it gets lost. That's just a fact of life with those things, but yeah. Uh okay. M3 by sixes go into this thing. Find my M3 by sixes. In this pile. M2 by six. Actually, that reminds me of a question I had. Has anybody put an MGN9 on a Voron Zero? Uh, the MGN9 rail, you know, you, I I ordered one to put on my 0.1. I have a question about that that dawned on me. Curious, because I couldn't find an answer to my question on... Um, on any forums or anything, so. Where's my bit? Where's my bit? Where'd I put my, oh, there it is. I think there's a mod for that. There is. Uh, there is. Where do you think the landscape of 3D printing reviews are headed? It, it seems like European reviewers are very focused to show data and pushing technology forward. <sighs> I don't know, because I know a lot of reviewers that I do know, like myself, um, are want to get out of reviews because reviews are just so time intensive that they're kind of not worth doing. Oh, that's an M3 by 10 in that one. They just create the situation where it's too much work for the return and you can't justify it as a business. Um, I really worry where the where it's going as a result of that. Like, I don't like that I'm not going to be doing reviews anymore, but I just can't justify it. Um, yeah, Europeans seem to be very focused on tech end of thing. I see that. And I do not mean any disrespect with this. I feel like too much so sometimes. Sometimes I feel like when you're focused on the tech of something, you get lost in the weeds and you forget the like real world application of what you're looking at. And you focus so heavily on numbers that the real world gets lost. So an affordable, uh, an affordable filament recycler, but uh, uh, yeah, some, some affordable way of doing filament recycling would be very interesting. Uh, will the American reviewers most just become media? It's feeling a bit that way. Uh, it's feeling a bit that way. Um, the tech details become a very uh, way uh, German way of doing reviews. Yes, uh, if you're not focused on the details, like I'm, I'm, I'm very detail oriented, but like data doesn't tell you live experience. Like I can tell you the flow rate numbers of a hot end. But if you're new to 3D printing or you're not pushing speed or big fat layers, what does that matter to you? Um, uh, Aurora Tech is chugging right along with reviews. I honestly never watched a single of, of their reviews. Um, purely, I just, I don't like to watch other people's reviews of machines um, until I review a machine usually. So I don't have their opinions color mine. Uh, I'd like to formulate my own feelings and opinions on something. Sometimes to my detriment, because sometimes I miss things as a result of that. Somebody notices something I missed or whatever. Uh, that's what E3D was saying in the Melt Zone. Yeah, I watched that that Melt Zone with E3D. And that's where, like, it's ho hard to both appeal to enthusiasts and newcomers. Yeah. And that's where, like, part of what I have a problem with, with... Um, Maybe media will be in the entry point to 3D printing like LTT is focusing on. I think LTT has what, what they have going for them that I wish 3D printing had is staff. Like if I had somebody who could test a machine for me while I'm working on this project, talking to you folks, and then give me data on that machine, and then I'll still use it for a day or two or something to, to really familiarize myself with it. If I had that data being supplied to me and test prints supplied to me by an employee of mine here to like control how it's being handled, like I can't work through a third party and trust them or whatever. Jose, welcome back. Um, 
I could justify reviews then, but then I have to pay that person. Like a lab from LTT, but for 3D printers. Yeah, it'd be great. I would love that. Uh, but then I can't justify doing reviews now because I can't justify the expense. If I have to pay somebody to produce that review, that makes it even harder. It's a common problem in any product category. After some amount of time becomes hard to relate to the new user's experience, that is also a very big problem. I 100% know that I have that problem and I've, I've tried hard to miss it, but I've grown into that problem of my day-to-day -day printing is not the same as most people's day-to-day -day printing, you know? Like I'm running my Vorons pushing 40 millimeters cubed per second, trying to get projects done fast. Uh, and, and not if your interns were actual interns. We have an intern actually, Ruby has an intern. Uh, who may become my assistant. Um, that's a different topic. Um, that's why interns exist. Yeah. Uh, I I would pay interns. So that's my problem. It, it, it could be a good avenue. Maybe I can find a school when I get out to, to Portland and work with uh, bringing on interns or something. But yeah. Uh... Hard to compare general tech channels though as the audience market is so much smaller for 3D printing. That's part of the problem is it, Antstar, welcome. Uh, a, lot of not, a lot of new printer uh, new printer releases are good enough for the new beginners unless there's something hardly wrong with them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, James coming in with the, uh, please drop the likes. Please do uh, appreciate it. Uh, assistant for channel help or actual video making i could honestly use both um on a, the business side is where i more so need assistance like i don't feel like i post on patreon enough i would love it if i had somebody around who could like take photos while i'm like talking to you folks or something about behind the scenes stuff that i could present on patreon that for me myself to do is hard check with universities in portland yeah yeah um that would definitely be something I will look at so uh, and then yeah like universe like uh, it would be nice to have somebody to operate a camera once in a while you know I have to do everything on my own which means cameras are static unless I move them it's hard work running a YouTube channel by yourself I I love what I do but it is a lot of hours if nothing else have someone draft up Patreon posts and other behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, that's, I would love to have that to provide more to people who are helping support what I do. And then like business emails. Like when I deal with sponsors, almost certainly sponsors. Uh, I was lurking for a minute. Are you moving out to Portland? Oh yeah, plural. I forgot to tell you that. I'm moving to Portland. Yes. I've only really announced it on stream and then two people like, uh, and on Patreon or something. Yes, we're moving to Portland uh, this summer. Um, uh, move to Europe. I work with multiple people capturing that stuff. Yeah, well, we, we've considered it, but then uh, I'd have to give up all the printers then. I'm not shipping them across the sea. <laughs> uh, we're going to try Portland for now. Uh, Portlandia. Yeah, Ruby told me I need to watch Portlandia to get my, uh, my like crash course down. I've never watched it. Have to meet up? Yes. I'm sure I'll be up in, in Seattle. I'm sure I'll be up that way. Visiting Joel and, and Ben. So. Uh, okay. So. Mini Stealth Burner is largely together. Uh, obviously, we got the tool holder to put in here yet. Get back to the instructions. Where was I at? Um, gear moves free right now. So. Does it move free? Yes, it's moving free. Still going to be a little wear in, it feels like, there, but it'll work. I've had worse. Align the drive gear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Double check that the drive gear is aligned with the filament path. It looks good, honestly. How many have seen Prusha's April Fool's video? I didn't watch it. I just shared it. I saw the premise and I shared it. Anybody seen any other really good, uh, ah, any other really good, um, 
April Fool's stuff out there. Kind of feels like it's been light so far this year. From what I've seen from of people from Oregon around here, Sacramento, you'll be just fine in Portland. I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. I don't expect there to be any issues with that for us. Lockpicking lawyers is pretty funny. I don't follow them. I, do, I only ever see some of their stuff randomly. Anybody watch the LTT video? 3D Musketeers is going to use a 3D printer to cook a steak starting in just a couple minutes. All right. Lockpick, another lockpicking lawyer note. Linus with the usual absurdities. Yeah, we watched that last night. Ruby was like yelling at the screen. That's, it's funny. LTT is one of the things I can get Ruby to watch with me. Like actually watch. And uh, yeah, so. Okay, fan time. LTT was good, yeah. I'm just, I'm mostly shocked the length they went to to film that. Like they had to set that whole house up in some fashion to film that. Uh, and also that they had the video. Been gone for an hour and the toolhead's not even installed. Thanks for calling me out, Double T. Thanks. Uh, I found it a lot better than last year's potato shenanigans. Yeah, the potato farm made me laugh, but definitely... Um, it definitely wasn't the best. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. We should have had this done by now. Chat's been really active and good, so... I get distracted too easily. That's the ADD streamer in me. It's what keeps chat in, it's what keeps us all interesting. Zach Friedman did a good one. I miss Zach's. Um, it's what keeps us all interesting. My ADD-ness. I want to stream to get things done. Um, gets nothing done. Yeah, you're not wrong. I'm getting more done than if I wasn't streaming. Honestly. <laughs> I think Zax was what he'd love to be doing. I'll have to check it out after stream. The Tech Quickie was uh, perfect. I didn't watch the Tech Quickie. I don't watch Tech Quickie. Uh, I did watch the uh, Ruby, actually. The two things I can really get... Well, there's a handful of things I can get Ruby to watch with me on YouTube. She'll watch LTT, main channel. Uh, she really, actually, really likes um, the news. Tech Linked. She really likes tech linked. Um, so, and she knows the schedule. So like when Monday, Wednesday, Friday, she's like, all right, where's our news? Uh, she likes Riley and she likes, um, error. I forget. Uh, do I actually have ADD? Oh yes, I do. Very much so. Very much so. Audi HD. Yay. Didn't even realize uh, Zax was a was a, a April Fool's. With that man, I'm not surprised. Uh, TechLink is good for fast updates. Yeah, totally. Who doesn't like Riley? Exactly. Um, Jacob. No, not Jacob. She doesn't care for him. Um, damn it. Guy who's been with them forever. Reminds her of a guy, oh, your wife doesn't like Riley. Um, my wife thinks Riley and Linus are the same person. James, thank you, James. I'm surprised I forgot that name. Uh, she, she calls James her boyfriend, so. <laughs> well, that's one of her boyfriends. The other one's NKBHD, Marquez. Uh, okay. Blower fans in, hot end fan in. Oh, shit, right. I put in the second one first. Uh, how, uh, Carrie, I'm not understanding the question. How has a drink shelf like that? I'm, I'm misunderstanding the question, I think. Yeah, of course mine. Yeah, well, Maker 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 Viking has been good for the chat uh, with with yours. Yeah. Come on, get out of there. Of course, I put the 
put the front fan, or uh, I put the uh, second part cooling fan in, forgetting I had to do the Razor one. Razor one was interesting. Torque test channel did a good one. I'll have to check that out afterwards. Uh, sorry, talking to chat. Have you not watched the video? Oh, um, Cookie Cat in the house. Welcome. You mean Zach's video? I have not. And I go on to I go on to AliExpress to order uh, LED, LED boards for my Vorons and never end up and order other stuff. I ordered way too much stuff yesterday on AliExpress. I didn't say that earlier. Um, when folks were asking me about the 4.5 millimeter uh, screws, I ordered titanium M3 by 4.5 millimeter screws. And then I went on a wild goose chase and I ordered enough titanium hardware to replace all the hardware on the X axis of the Trident with titanium um, chasing grams. So I kind of hate myself for that right now. <sighs> uh, Any the hot end fan now. One of these has longer wire than the other. I think the shorter wire. Uh, how's shipping to the U.S. from AliExpress? You got you get 15 day deliveries. Usually 15 days and less. AliExpress is good and bad for ADD, very much so. Uh, oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I doubt it's gonna do a whole heck of a lot, honestly. But it was something I was curious about, so I ordered them. Uh, which ones go in here? I'm going to look at the LDO instructions, make sure I'm not screwing up quick. Uh, I'm going to double check too. Did I miss any members join? Nope. Not since the last. How much were titanium screws for the entire printer? I only, I ordered more than enough. I ordered excess. Um, I usually get stuff from AliExpress in a week to worst case four weeks, usually. Uh, Antstar, yeah, we, we were talking about the, the, uh, the Voron Delta April Fools. Uh, Double T's here somewhere in the house, who was one of the ones who built the Delta. Um, I spent like $120 on titanium screws yesterday. <laughs> it's definitely been, uh, Vishal, mine's been getting quicker too. AliExpress has been a lot quicker for me recently. Um... Uh, does that have a carbon uh, gantry for chasing grams? No, it's got the Fizek, uh CNC gantry. So the, the like toothpick gantry. But is it actually April Fool's if you build something cool that works? It's how a Voron team does. It's, it's how Voron builders do April Fool's. <laughs> um, where was I at? Oh, I got to figure out which fan I got to put in here. The joke is the serial request. The printer is real. There you go. That makes more sense. Okay. 0 0.2. Kit. Supplementary guide. That's not what I wanted. Assembly manual. No, no, no. 0 0.2. Build notes. That's what I want. Okay. Okay. Which fan do I use here? There's two different fans with two different lengths of wire. Which one are you expecting me to use? I'm just, I don't know if this one fan is gonna reach to the, the Pico board. Amazon gonna have to up its game. Yeah, honestly, Amazon's gotten slower for me lately and worse. Uh, seen somebody do the, uh, you just use a rail on a V0. I've seen that before. I've seen things like it. Every time you come on here, you run out of hex bolts. It's a hex we put on you. I'm putting the shorter one in here. It doesn't say in the LDO instructions which one I should be using. So, I don't think it does. Correct alignment, metal thumb screws. Skip. Yeah. Does not say. Oh well.
Uh, problem is my hobbies become a side gig, so I, I buy things in quantity. I mean, that's me too, I buy things in quantity. Like I said, I spent $120 yesterday in titanium hardware, but that was enough to do a couple of Vorons. I got enough to do the X-axis on my V0 build and the X-axis on the Trident and still have enough left over to probably do two more machines. Like, cause it was like, I got like 20 M3 by eights. No, I got like 50 M3 by eights and like, you know, so went overboard. But that's why I have the toolbox drawers full of like ad extra parts and whatever. Uh, constantly having stuff stolen from Amazon. Yeah, it stinks. Uh, I think the Rook just uses a rail for a gantry. Uh, the um, the new uh, Rat Rig V Chunk does too. Rat Rig V Chunk does as well. Okay. Yeah, that looks about right with that that length of wire. Okay. Tool heads coming together. Fans are in. Had enough aluminum extrusions or, uh, delivered this morning for another eight. Whew. How, do you know how much weight you're saving per machine? No idea. I'm definitely going to figure it out. I'm definitely going to weigh out the hardware and figure it out. There's also recently an issue with Amazon. Uh, there's, I mean, there's dumb things. Like if you use button head screws, button head screws weigh less than socket heads so just switching all of your hardware that was socket head to button head if it fits um uh you can save weight that way Oof. i'm blanking my add is on fire today i need more monster I need monster to make my brain slow down. 142 concurrent viewers. Welcome folks. We've hit the the number uh, the answer plus 100. Please consider dropping a like. So more folks can find the stream. Okay. Now I can put the motor in. What size screw? M3 by 10s. Psh. I need to find a good assorted set of M2 and M uh, to M5 hardware. Yeah. Uh, unofficial member of the socket head cult. Optimization be damned. <laughs> All right. Hey, at least you got your thing. Uh, your ADHD experience is, uh, is uh, similar. Yeah. Monster slows my brain down. I can pound a monster and go to sleep. <laughs> Just how it works. All right, all right. Get the motor on this thing. Start. Screw to start. Uh, what's annoying in the 3D printing world is assorted kits is we need short M5 T-nuts. I don't know what you're saying. You mean like, uh, Roland's that are shorter or? What annoys me is this. I always run out of, uh, just watch BV and he had a 42 shirt. Cool. Um, uh, error. Where were they headed? It works by activating the regulation part of the brain. That makes some sense. Uh, I learned I have ADD while getting my son evaluated. That is a very common experience for people. Uh, speeds your brain up, maker. Eh, it happens. Oh, eight millimeter M5s, I mean, okay. Uh, my biggest... The thing that always drives me nuts about kits is uh, is things uh, is the sizes you just burn through. Like M3 by eight, I use M3 by eight on every project ever. 
I burn through it so fast. And then I have to buy a whole... I don't have to. But the price of a kit... Um, <laughs> kid Nathan, same. I read all about my son. I was like, check, check, check. Yeah. Um, so, where was I at? Oh, hardware. Yeah, I burned through M3 by 8. And then I'm like, well... I could just order M3 by 8 and restock on that. But if I order just M3 by 8 screws, it's like $10 for 100 of them. But I can order a, a whole hardware kit for like $9.99 that comes with like 50 of them. And then I get all the other sizes too. So I end up with piles of these kits around with no M3 by 8s in them and everything else. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave this loose for the moment. Make sure we're into the gear. That feels pretty good. Um, I didn't get diagnosed till my 30s. Crazy to think of how things could have been different. Honestly, yeah, I know what you mean. I brought it up to my mom one time. I've brought it up to my mother before and been like, was there, you never like, you never knew, really? Like, you didn't have a clue. Sounds like you should just be ordering 100 M3 by 8s. You're not wrong. AliExpress is, uh, AliExpress is great for that. Yeah, I've got to start doing that. i got to start ordering screws off AliExpress like that. Uh, overflowing with the weird sizes. I need to stop buying them. Yeah, I need to stop doing that. I need to just start buying the size... I need. Okay, hot end time. Uh, do I have the hot end here? Yes, I do. Blue heat sink. Revo Voron. Revo Voron. Uh, is this a? That's a forty watt heater element. Uh, is the LDO Voron a good hot end for a Trident? For the Trident. Uh, my trident, not necessarily. Um, not enough flow for me. Uh, I'm going to be putting it in here because I think it's going to be with the high flow hot end, plenty of flow uh, for this machine, I think. I'm going to test it uh, to find out. My, because like, I'm expecting around 30 millimeters cubed per second out of this. For a lot of folks, that's perfectly fine. For my two point, my Voron 2.4, I ran a 30 millimeters cubed uh, high, uh, flow hot end for a long time, uh, and it it got the job done just fine. And it's what I ran for most of the time so far. So I have a Revo, and I'm hard debating switching to the Rapido. Honestly, that's what I was running in there. Uh, the Rick, uh, I was running a Rapido in my 2.4, and I kind of was flow rate limited personally. For 100 bucks, which would you recommend? Uh, are you asking about the Rapido? Oh, what would I recommend there? I have five millimeters cubed on my printer. Hey, whatever works for you. Still prints. Um, I don't know. I'm really in a weird spot with hot ends right now. I don't have a go-to recommendation. I really like the Rapido hot end. I do. Um, it's a solid hot end. It is... For what it is, I really like the everything about it, pretty much. Um, why did I just go black? Oh, I switched to the wrong camera angle. Sorry. I accidentally hit two buttons on the uh, on the switcher. Um, so I really like the Rapido, personally. I do. Um, it just was holding my machine back a bit. But that's not everybody's situation. Return to the Mark Eight. Yes, everybody just simplify. Let's go back to Mark 8s. Um, I, I also really like Revo. I just really like the Revo ecosystem, personally. Especially now with the reduced price. Price has come down on them. That's helping a bit. Not a lot, but... I really like Rapido 2, but buying a replacement heater core is 70% of the price. The new heater element is a lot cheaper. Rapido V2 ha uses the same style as the bamboos. Um... Rapido plus CHT is what I'm debating. Yeah, I was, that's what I'm, I was running. That Rapido has a CHT in it right now. And printing the ASA that I print almost exclusively 
uh, I was getting like 30 to 32 millimeters cubed per second. I honestly hoped for more. Revo needs a super high flow. I am hoping, and I, okay. I might as well say it because I'm not gonna do it. I started designing a Revo Volcano this week. I started playing around with designing a Revo Volcano and I can come up with a few ways where I could do it. I just think it's a little overcomplicated. And I also am like quite certain that by the time I was done it, uh, E3D will probably come out with something else and I and it, I wouldn't be able to sell it, uh, was my thought. I think what they really need to do, in my opinion, is they need to make a Revo volcano. That's it. Just this section here should be twice as long as it is and just a twice as long ceramic heater element. Like, I don't see why not, you know? the same benefit of Revo, just Volcano. Uh, I was thinking the same, but it would be cool, uh, complete overhaul of the system though. It would just be a different heater core. That, this would be, what I just said. If it's just a longer section, it'd be a longer heater core and the longer nozzles and that's it. Um, that's all it would be. You, it's just sourcing the heater element, I think is probably the biggest issue. Uh, and maintaining a heater, like two heater, you'd almost have to take two heater elements and conjoin them and then making sure that they work, which is not unheard of. Um, I have one around here. The Magneto X. The Magneto X's hot end has two heater, uh, it's extra long hot end. It's got three. I will be right back. I actually don't have it. it the, the extra long one is in the machine right now. But yeah, like this. This is the hot end from the Magneto X. This is the hot end from the Magneto X. Realistically, if they just had like this heater element with a Revo, um, a, a Revo that just, you know, was longer to get through that whole heater element in the melt zone than Revo Volcano. But, um, there's a there's three hot ends for the uh, Magneto X. There's this one, uh, and then there's one that's even longer than this. It's about yay long. And the one that's longer has two heater elements. It has two independent heater elements. Uh, what's the load cell look like? I might have to spare a load cell. Let me let me grab real quick. Let me see. Got it. Filament stories in the house. Welcome, Courtney. You back from vacation? Got it. This is the load cell out of the Magneto X. This is the old one. Um, this is not the current one. So there's an updated version of this, but the only thing they really changed about the updated version is it's insulated. Uh, it's better insulated so that it uh, it's isolated from electrical noise and such. So. Welcome back, Courtney, welcome back. So that is the load cell from the Magneto X. We'll do a stream on the Magneto X sometime. I've got a chamber, an enclosure to put on it and I gotta do, gotta do a few little things on it. Um, so we'll do a stream on that at some point. Build the enclosure at the least, play around with it. <clears throat> they're, they're talking about releasing that design. Um, P.O. Poly has been talking about releasing the individual components from their machines so that people could build things like the linear motors, the load cell, and all that so that people could integrate them into their builds. I know that has been a topic of conversation. Okay, Revo hot end. Let's actually put it together. I've got to get a high flow hot, hot side. I've got a couple of them. 
Uh, okay, here's a 60 watt heater element. That's what I need. And here is a 0.4 high flow nozzle. It's the other thing I needed. Grant's trying to sous vide a steak right now. Oh boy. Does Cookie Cad sell in the EU? I don't believe they currently do. I think they're working on it. Um, to my knowledge, you're working on that, aren't you? I'm going to combine these kits maybe and uh, break this down a little bit. All right, now there's not a high flow hot end in, or heater in here. It's a 40 watt in here now. And this high flow 0.6 and a high flow 0.6. Okay, what was that? What are you? I don't know what this is in this box. And if you want to help, ask your favorite retailers. There you go. Oh, it's Obsidian. Uh, it's an Obsidian uh, high flow. Is it high flow or just Obsidian? Nope, it's just Obsidian. I think. Forgot I had that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of this box. This will how make Voron Zeros? Does it, are you asking how many Voron Zeros does this make for me? Five? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how many I've built, honestly. Should say the spec under the silicone ring. I always forget to pull it back. I, I, ah. uh, I know I have some Revo High Flows around here. Uh, Revo High Flow. Obsidian. I know I have around here, but whatever. Okay. So, 60 watt heater elements, what we're going with. Ooh, I should have looked if the LDO one is terminated in a specific way. Did not take note of that. It is. It is a little bit different in its termination. That could be an issue. Wait. Error. Okay, so this one has a different termination. I'm going to figure out which one is going to work for me. These are both 60 watt units. Where did I just put the 40 watt unit? I thought I had a 40 watt unit. Revo High Flow Hot Side. LDO gray one. Where'd I put the LDO blue one? Oh, it's back in the box. One termination is Voron style, the other one is EDO. Uh, okay, so I need the kind. This is the one that came with the LDO kit. So luckily I have that already. I don't have to terminate anything. This is how it came from the LDO kit. So I do have this one. It's a 60 watt high flow unit that is terminated the same way. So good. Okay. All good. All good, all good. Tea time. All right. Thanks for being here, Carrie. Hopefully you get back. Uh, is shortening a thermistor wire for cable management a bad idea? No. You are changing the resistance value of your thermistor wire if you're changing the length by either extending or shortening it. It's marginal. It is not an issue. You're going to be tuning the machine to the hot end for you know PID tuning for heater elements. You're going to be tuning filaments to that machine. It doesn't matter. All right. And we got a Revo Voron with a high flow 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a 60 watt heater element. Uh, dual Molex uh, Microfit is E3D, Ferrules and JST is Voron. Okay, awesome, thank you. That, that clarifies a little. Uh, 
uh, the Trident build has sent you into a 9mm uh, mod rabbit hole. Double T's in the house, you can ask them about the uh, 9mm stuff. The design I'm using anyway is, is from Double T. Ugh. Okay. Now I gotta assemble M3x8s into the... Oh dang it, I don't have that out. There we go. The Revo. Uh, the Revo tool chain, or, you know, setup. You go into there. I need M3 by 8s to put this together with. M3 by 8s. Four of them. There's an ETA on the Trident build. Uh, undetermined until parts arrive. It is undetermined until parts arrive. I am unfortunately waiting on parts right now, and I can't rush the folks who are supplying the parts, so... Yep, currently undetermined till we get the parts. I'm hoping very soon. Uh, I really want to get that machine running. I I will probably stream later this week. Um, I think I'll probably stream Thursday of this week, and I'll put it out there as soon as I can, and it'll probably be back on the Trident. Um, with that, it will be probably start on some electrical layout like we'll get the electrical panel in mount the boards and start laying out some wiring and talk about like some of that direction but the project is a bit stalled until I get those parts so till I get those parts it's a bit stalled Looks like a very cool build, thank you. Hopefully. Hopefully it is. I also really need to get back to a Mandic Really video. I don't know, I'm kind of, kind of in limbo at the moment. I need to produce a, bit, uh, a video or two on Mandic Really before Rocky Mountain, so. I'm in decision hell right now. I need to redo my AB gantry on my 2.4 and don't know if I want to do 9mm or just rebuild. I'm just going to rebuild my... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to rebuild my... Uh, my 2.4 soon, and I'm just going to stick to the 6mm, personally. Um, I also haven't run the 9mm yet on the Trident, so I might regret that pretty quick. I don't know. We'll find out. Waiting on a few parts for that project as well, so I can rebuild my 2.4 on stream sometime soon. Okay. Oh, right. PTFE tube. I can act, wow, this is the first time ever I can actually use the PTFE tube. Um, why do you separate live streams from the main channel? Zombie Hedgehog in the house, welcome. Um, I did it because I want to be, Mandic really, the main channel, is going to go more into making projects and building fun stuff, not necessarily 3D printers. Um, that's the direction moving forward. I want to use 3D printing to show that it's not just that we can do a lot of fun stuff with it um, and feature machines here and there. But I was having this really hard time where I was starting to do these projects where we're like building fun stuff and building desks and functional objects. And then I would do a video about 3D printers, like a super technical look at a high flow nozzle, followed by a maker project, followed by another look at a in-depth thing with 3D printer firmware or something. And it felt really confusing to me for an audience. I feel like the maker stuff that I'm doing has more mass market appeal where like, you know, somebody might watch those videos with their family. Whereas YouTube likes consistent, sure shut up. YouTube likes consistent content. Exactly. So like if, if one week I make a video about building a life size statue out of 3d printed stuff or whatever, and then the next week I make a video about like modifying your Voron. It really can could, could create a confused audience experience, I feel like. Um, and now, I, so that's why the live stream channel came about. So I could like still work on these projects with folks and have a place for this stuff to go and uh, 
Mandic really maker videos, Mandic labs making tools. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's pretty much how it's probably going to work. Um, the biggest channels cater to wider audiences. I have to cater to a wider audience and I have to like find a balance. So Mandic Labs here on Mandic Labs will both be streaming, working on these projects, having fun like this. Um, um, and then error. Mandic Labs will be like the more technical stuff, doing these streams uh, and like more technical, like uh, today I'm gonna film a video for this channel, Mandic Labs, about how to multicolor print with a single nozzle. I keep pointing to other people's videos. I'm just going to make my own video about it, you know? Um, how to print stuff like, like this with a single novel. And it's something I could never justify making an entire video about on Mandic, really. So this place will be more of like quicker, dirtier videos about like tech topics than the Mandic, really stuff was. So I have like this whole sta layer uh, uh, pfft, standard that I kind of like hold myself to on Mandic really um, to a detrimental degree and this place I'm feeling freer to just make stuff because you folks are watching me live all the time screw up and lose my mind about what I'm talking about or get sidetracked and side quest and like I feel like that's kind of more of the theme over here <clears throat> how many LEDs can you connect to an SKR Pico I would like to have LEDs on the Kirigami extruder nozzle and led strips so four locations could all four locations be controlled individually technically they are addressable leds so it's possible this channel's more laid back and down to earth that's that's what the goal of it for certain um in that scenario i would look at yeah, you're going to need to use GPIO pins or a clipper expander. I would look at a clipper expander board probably. Um, then you can supplementally control. The question, yes, but they'd be one long chain. And then you have to count to get the exact, to create your macros for different uh, lighting scenarios. Eh. Um, what was I going to say? Clipper expander board will add additional... Uh, RGB control for you. The SKR Pico could power quite a few LEDs, but there's another question. Are you powering your Raspberry Pi off of, AKA freaking headache. Uh, are you powering your Raspberry Pi off of um, the SKR Pico? Because that's gonna take some of your five volt rail power supply budget. And then if you have USB devices, like a camera and such plugged in, uh, I have ESP32s on my printers. I've been meaning to just start playing with that stuff, setting up a simple, um, a simple setup with uh, with ESP32. I need to get like a handful of the ESP32 like W LED boards in for projects. I need to get some. I keep meaning to reach out to PCBWay. I don't work with them, but I'd like to on stuff like that. So. All right. PTFE tube, that's where I was headed. I don't see. Right. Capricorn tube. Capricorn. Uh, they're good and work with HomeKit, control them through Clipper. Yeah, I know you can add them through Clipper and, and control. So that's what I need to be looking at. A lot more to do. So many rep rap, pro uh, so many Rocky Mountain projects. Yeah. Uh, bu -bu -bu, where was I at? There's something I, I wanted to... Uh, w LEDs work great for standalone projects. Yeah, I really want to do... A handful of RGB st standalone projects, so. Should really be labeling these 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You're not wrong. That's that's not a bad point. It's not a bad point. Uh, ba -ba -ba. There we go. I can never use this tool until now. 
This is, I've never been able to use this tool because I, I don't normally run a Revo hot end. <laughs> I can actually use the tool this time. WLED's fun to play with. Donut Cat coming in. Uh, SRT Dan, uh, Devin, uh, sorry. SRT Devin saying the same. Okay. I don't know why this is being tight. This material shrunk a little, I think. I'm just going to mark above it. Honestly, uh, like, addressable RD RGB is a, is a wall you bounce off of. I understand, um... The, the annoying thing for me is um, I like addressable RGB and then 99.99% .99 of the time I leave them on a single color. Like the LEDs in my 2.4 back there, that's addressable RGB LEDs. I could change the color on that at any time. I don't. <laughs> uh, there is the NeoPixel settings where you can turn it, yeah, to change colors for... I had that all on my Voron where the LEDs changed colors during heat up and when the print was done and blah, blah, blah. And honestly, most of the time it annoyed me. I just left them all white all the time. Yeah, the Rick all white all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got rid of all those macros and I just went back to like manually controlling all white done. All right, there's our tooty little... I need the countersink bit Gene knocked off the uh, white, bright white. I like cool white personally, yeah. I'm not a warm color person, personally. Not a warm color person. Colored on a chamber, white on a tool head, reasonable. I used to do that some, and I just, I don't know, I just switched to... Uh, only change color on the nozzle LEDs, yeah. 5,000 white, yes. I like 5,000 to 5,600, somewhere in there, max. All right, little countersink on this. Just chamfer the edge of each end of this PTFE tube, and we can put this into the tool head. Yeah, I put a, I just put a 24 volt uh, white. Uh, I just put a 24 volt white LED strip in the uh, the Magneto X because uh, the enclosure that we're eventually going to put on the enclosure uh, we will eventually put on on stream it um, it has smoked panels. So once you put it together with that enclosure, it gets really dark, real dark. All right, now we got our largely assembled tool head. Uh, 5,000 to 6,000 is your go-to, but the wife likes the 3,000 to 4,000. I'm lucky uh, Ruby is with me on uh, liking cool light. She, she agrees with me, and all of the lights in our house are like 5,000 Kelvin. So we are a cool house. Okay. M3 by 35s. And I think we can get this mounted. On to finally get this mounted. I gotta cut the belts. I gotta cut the belts. Too long. Too long, too long, too long. Yeah, over here. Boom. Okay, M3 by 35s, and on we go. All right, did I, where did I just put those? 25s, error. <laughs> I, I, did, I misplaced the 35s in that time. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, uh, anybody who, uh, if anybody wants to know, um, anybody who happened to watch the other day when I was working on, I think it was the last, 
I forget what stream it was, but I, I mentioned I misplaced the print bed off of the Mark IV, the Prusa Mark IV, which I just realized the light's off. The Prusa Mark IV, uh, I found it because I watched my own stream. I looked back at the stream and I was able to see where I put it. I put it on the bed of the Trident. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find it, because it was blending in, because it was a bed on top of a bed. Or build plate on top of a bed. Come on. I usually uh, oversize my uh, Bowden tubes, my little lengths of Bowden tube inside so that there's equal pressure on the extruder side and the hot end side. Sometimes it makes aligning these screws just a little annoying. Come on. That's how weak this thing is. Come on, get through there. Ah, I might have to cut that just a hair shorter. Try putting the other one in. And <laughs> maybe I should start streaming too so I can check back where my tools went. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, it was handy. It was handy for that. Dang it. This is like just ever so slightly misaligned. Oh, I think I see why. It was tilted. I think it was tilted. There we go. There it's going. This is where this thing's really good. It's not strong, but it running in like this, where it's like grabbing on the plastic and you gotta thread it the whole freaking way. It doesn't just drop through. Good for that. This is a custom LTT screwdriver. Yes, it is. Custom LTT screwdriver. I got it. Excuse me. At LTX 2023. Yep. Ratchet sounds so recognizable. Yes, it is. You're right. It's satisfying. It's a very satisfying sound. The sound of electric screwdrivers reminds you of the dentist. Okay, that's fair, and now I'm not gonna unhear that. It's weird seeing someone use the handle and not the shaft. Yeah. All right. Now I've got, I should cable manage fan wires up and out of the way while I'm here probably just quickly cable manage these out of the way uh, it was fun getting to customize your own yeah I, uh, I my, my video from LTX was not very heavily watched but I, I filmed Ruby making hers Ruby has one she made as well. Um, matches her hair, purple and purple and red. Um, it was fun, yeah. Getting to getting to uh, to like talk to people and see how they're kind of final assembled and such. The arbor presses and the custom tooling they had set up for them. All right, there's that. I think all of these 
are gonna go this way. I don't know if I should cable manage the hot end wiring yet, but I'm going to. Any idea how the LTT screwdriver would hold up to grease, oil, hydraulic fluids? I work on aircraft, uh, but I have a snap-on. Keeps falling. Oh, the butt cap keeps falling off. Um, the butt cap on this is pressed in uh, pretty, pretty solidly, but um, I honestly don't know. One thing I wish this had when it comes to that type of application is the grip isn't knurled or rubberized or anything. It's a tri-lobe, so tri-lobe's really good for, for getting a good torque grip on things. But I do feel like it gets a little little slick pretty easily. What are you doing, dude? Jekyll. Jekyll. He's clawing at the carpet. Jekyll! Dude. Go. <laughs> um, yeah. Since I've had them, I haven't done a whole hell of a lot of that kind of work, so yeah. Hi, dude. What are you doing? Come here. Come say hi to stream. Come here. Come here. You never come say hi to the stream. People hear of you, but they don't see you. Come here. Yeah. Oh, it's a big boy. The big boy's here. What you doing? Hi. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you folks have met Jekyll yet. This is Jekyll. Bye. <laughs> and he's gone. He does not want to be the star like Gene does, just like his mother. He is a big boy. He's a big boy. He's our biggest. Our little panther. Yep. Yep, our little panther. He's a demon. He's a he's the youngest, so he he uh he picks on his sisters. He's Ruby's cat. Uh, that she brought to the relationship. I brought Jean and Zelda. So. I always run into the problem where overmolding on my tools gets sticky pretty quick. Yeah, agreed. I also run into that problem, um, and it that's a sensory issue big time for me. So that's where I wish, I think I wish this was knurled or stippled. Uh, I may get one, I may get another one and stipple it and try it. Uh, a black cat named Sabbath. Cool. Um, or had. Um, I think stippling is probably the way to go. Like stippling a gun grip or something. I think that might work well on this. Should play with it sometime. Sometime I'll play with it. Okay. Alright. This is together and ready to go on here. Heard things, good things about Weira. I, you know, I've not used a lot of Weira tools personally. I've always heard good things as well, but I've not used a lot myself. Okay. On you. Uh, oh, I, I forgot. Yeah, I got to drop. I think I got to drop. No. Yeah, they're, they're tapped and threaded. On goodbye to our aluminum carriage. Hidden away behind the tool head. You shall be. All right. LTT screwdriver. Bought a bunch of weird stuff just today off Amazon. Cool. I've been thinking, I sh I've been meaning to order a set of the Weira hex drivers, the ball hex, they're colored ones. Just for like, I don't love them because they're a little thicker than other ones. Uh, that metal part holding the tool head. Where's that from? That is from Fabrico. That is uh, Honey Badger Fabrico uh, gan uh, carriage, X carriage. Uh, Chris, guys, hello, welcome. Yeah, that is from Fabrico. Doing this with a facing the opposite direction of me so you folks can see is annoying. <laughs> always the problem of a content creator having to work at angles that work for the camera not for you pixel you are welcome uh, 
uh, yeah, uh, G. Michael Bridge, exactly. The Weiras with the plastic color on them, it is nice for spotting them, but they're too, they're too fat, so it makes it hard to reach into deep spots. The Allen keys are great. They're not your normal hex. They they have a better grip to them. Huh, okay. Big fan of Tecton, non-ball hex, even the smaller grip. I just need, um, sounds like you need a head mount cam. I have I, I have the second angle, or another angle here I haven't been using because I forget I have it. Nope, it's black right now. <laughs> Damn it. So many black screens on the stream. Let me adjust this quick. It's overexposed as hell. There we go. Confirm. Nope. I'm just no luck today with cameras. Forget it. Are you going to mount the strain relief piece in the back? Could you check if it hits the motor mounts when the Y is all the way back? Uh, I will check. I don't believe it will because this is not an MGN 9. This is an MGN 7. It should be fine. <laughs> but I will check. Uh, we will be installing that. So, got it right here. You ever... I feel like I have cat hair on my face right now after, after bear hugging Jekyll. That's what I get. My face, like, I can feel a few pieces of cat hair stuck to my face and it's driving me nuts. Colors are awesome. Thank you to Cookie Cad. Can't wait to see the skirts. The skirts are not going to be quite as impressive, I don't think. Um, just because of the change at layer height issue. Uh, oh, yeah. M3 by 16 through the back. Almost forgot about that one. Almost forgot about that one. Yours hit with the MGN7. Interesting. Interesting. It's been a bit since I built a V0, a 0 0.2. I don't know. A look. Why are you going in so freaking tough? The lower screws are pushing up and kind of misaligning things here. Oof. That's not great. It feels terrible. Ever thought about converting one of your zeros to a Pandora's box? Yes, no. Um. Oh, I see what the problem is. This doesn't need an M3 by 16. I'm thinking about this wrong. It needs to be a lot shorter. Because of the CNC gantry, it's got to be a lot for shorter. Just swap to a mini SB Sherpa. Yeah. Luckily, I have a spare one of these. I can measure it. Um, my 0 0.1, I haven't really shared that with you folks on stream, I don't think. Let me see if I can load it up real quick. Uh, my 0 0.1 is going to be a... Let me pull this over. I got Fusion open. I can, I can pull it over. Close that project. Save. Uh, my 0 0.1 is going to be a crossover between... Well, when it gets updated. It's going to be a crossover between a Pandora's box and a box zero. It's not getting the full Pandora's box treatment with the, um, uh, bah, 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 bah. um, dang it. I'm blanking. Uh, triple, triple Z. It's not getting a triple Z, but it is getting, you can close any time now fusion. Um, uh, it's getting the frame design of a Pandora's box. Yeah, so it'll have the same frame design and panels as a Pandora's box, but it's got box zero kinematics. Why is that so misaligned? I'm gonna loosen up these screws real quick. The, the back support screw is like a little misaligned. Uh, does the V0 suffer from the cantilever design like the Ender 5. It's such a small bed that it's not as big of an issue. It can suffer from that. 
Um, the default printed parts for the for the bed definitely have that issue. The Kirigami bed uh, that I have on here, which is a folded sheet metal aluminum design, helps. And then there's a CNC bed to frame that really helps. But where'd you go, Fusion? I think Fusion froze up. It's all angry. Oh, nope, there it is. Not an issue with the Fizex CNC. That thing is rigid AF. Norton, thank you for stopping by. It was great having you. See you next time around. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Where's my 0 0.2? There it is. Are there smaller printers? There's a few smaller projects out there. There are a few smaller projects out there. I think you can even use boop with the CNC with the CNC bed mount. Yeah, I've heard of people doing it, but mine has cantilever issues. But it was not only it was not only my first four on a form bot kit, but also second time printing ABS. Yeah, the the ABS bed pieces and extrusions definitely have can have an issue. Okay, dang it. Try and get this in here. There we go. I think that might be too long. I think it's too long. I think there's a mini V0 with a 4040 build volume. There's that one I've been seeing going around Twitter that uh, some, I believe it's somebody in Japan built that's like really freaking tiny and uses a bamboo hot end. Nope, M3 by six is too short, so it's gotta be M3 by eight. Okay, gotta be M3 by eight, but it feels like this might be just a hair long for that piece. Feels like it might be going through and hitting the, uh, that's the one I saw, yeah. It might be hitting the, uh, we're gonna find out. Feels like it might hit the extruder gear. I need M3, I'm gonna put, maybe put an M3 washer behind this. Get a shim washer. Stick a shim washer behind the head. I want a watch size 3D printer. That should do. That should do it. Oh yeah, that tightened a fair bit. All right, get this good and tight. Good and tight. And then we can tighten up our front screws. You can build the world's smallest printer, resin. There's another YouTube video about it, oh geez. I mean, you could use like a watch, like a, a, a one inch LCD, really, I guess. 300 versus 350, any opinion? 350 is gonna be a little bit slower of a machine. So that's something to factor in. It really depends on your build needs. Um, I wish I had a 350. All of my machines are 300s. Uh, my, uh, like the Trident I'm doing, the next 2.4 I'm doing, my main 2.4, I really wish I had a 350 option but i don't um but if you only had one probably it's better to go with the 350 you're going to be a little slower but you won't be worried about build i think 300 is honestly a really optimal size for day-to-day -day machine use personally um a good balance exactly it's a good balance i really think it is day-to-day -day use 300 is like the majority of my needs okay um show you the uh zero project quick my my other zero which i'm probably gonna get started on that project once this one's done um once the cookie cad zero is done we will probably move to my main zero uh bu -bu -bu, screen share Boop. so here is up oh, it's in visual styles visible edges only so here's the frame design it's the, oh, why is everything hiding? 
What are the other mounts? AB drives. AB drives. Oh, I one of them's missing. Nope. B drive? What the heck? I don't know. One of them is missing for some reason. But, uh, so, this is the design. It's a, a Pandora frame. So, it's the longer extrusions. No top hat. Just one piece, single door, single panels. And then box zero design in the motor mounting as in since this extrusion goes up the there's extra idler pulleys to snake around there with the belt path i don't know why this is all fucked up right now uh but yeah so it exists that's the next that's the rebuild project for my main zero we'll get to that sometime soon it's my fault I was in there messing around with something and I, I think I I don't know what I did I spaced something out I I was tweaking a piece and I, I hid the I hid one of the layers and I don't know where the hell it is one of the components is hiding right now and I can't find it Not many, not many people print big, but it's nice to have the space when you need it. Yeah, I mean that's that's reasonable. Like I just printed tiny little parts on the v, the Voron two uh, two point four. I should have printed it on the V zero. I just didn't feel like moving the filament from one machine to another. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Okay, now it's time for the strain relief piece. One eighty six. Let me look at the LDO instructions. Skip, follow the guide for the Pico Bilical. Okay. Pico Bilical. Tool head mount. Oh, fuck yeah, those little spacers. Install metal standoffs. Partly attach the PCB mount. Then the PCB. Then the spacer. Okay. That's pretty easy. And 3x12s. And M3 by 8s. We can do that. We can do that. Alright, metal standoff time for this. I gotta find the metal standoffs real quick. Lower the desk. I know they're here somewhere. I had them earlier. There they are. What do you think about belt printers? I think they got abandoned. Uh, I think belt printers kind of came and went, and that's sad. I know there are companies still working with them, but the, for the most part, in my opinion, the slicing side is the issue right now. Software is the issue more than hardware, I think. And it feels like nobody's developing anything really on the, uh, on the software side. So until that catches up, like, like 3d, like regular 3d printing, uh, belts as in the beds. Yes. The belt printers where the, the belt, uh, oh, little aluminum standoffs here, uh, the belt printers that print onto a, a belt, uh, belt printers should be 90 degrees and they would be more popular. That's an issue too. Um, you know, a lot of designs are just not intended for for the geometry angles and whatever you run into with belt printers. That's absolutely a thing. I, my biggest problem is what I see. I've never had one. I've never had one, so I can't say for sure. Uh, but I, everything I see of them is they're just the print quality is not there, in my opinion. Uh, and then a lot of people realize they don't need to print long, skinny things. Yeah. And that's where the... Uh, 
Yeah, it's good for swords. And that's the problem. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, well, what about the production aspect? You can do, like, you could just parts, 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 and just pump them out. Um, uh, but if the quality's not there, there's no point. That's, that's my problem. Like, if I need to be running off a thousand of one part, it's because I'm selling it. And if the quality of the part I'm printing isn't good enough, then I can't sell it. So it totally defeats the purpose. That's not our PCB. Where's our Pico Bilical PCB? There's the Pico board. There's a kit for the 2.4. Yeah, I've seen that at uh, at East Coast Rep Wrap at Earth. Better print the Voroff system. I saw that. That's interesting. Okay. Ah, oh, damn it. The heater input on this is on the other side of the board. I'm going to have to reroute the, the cables on this. Oh, well. I, 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 I defeated myself. I, I outthunk, I outthunk myself. Okay. Ah, there we go. M3 by eights to put on this adapter piece. You can DIY, um, 90 degree belt printers, but you can't sell them. Makes sense. The patent issues. Yeah, that Voroff, Voroff design seems interesting, but I also, also seems, uh, like bed leveling and stuff would be a total nightmare to, to do. All right, these standoffs aren't long enough. LDO, are they? Hmm. These standoffs aren't long enough. What length are these, and what length should they be? I need 20s. Good, I've got 20s. You have to wait to cool, too. That's a good point. Which totally ruins your chamber temps. Like, personally, what I do when I'm running parts continually on my 2.4, or any of my printers, really, um... I will pop the tool, I'll take the PEI, the print uh, the print sheet out, and I'll set it on top of the printer or on a bench or something, and then I'll immediately reheat the printer. So the heat stays in the chamber, the bed stays hot, and then the plate can, uh, uh, multiple beds is the way to go, yeah. Uh, and then the bed can cool. It still cools a little too rapidly, so ASA can warp a little bit when you do this, but then it's great for, you know, crack it off the bed and keep going. Okay, I need to get longer standoffs in here. The ones they provided are too short for this for some reason. There's probably printed spacers that go in between, but I've got long enough standoffs, so why use printed spacers? Two build sheets is the answer, yeah. Two build sheets is the answer. Christopher Sexton, welcome! Better late than never. Well, welcome to it. I don't know how much longer we're going to be here. I'm going to get the tool head on here, and I think we might have to call it. My dad was just texting. He needs uh, he needs to talk to me about a project. So I might have to duck out soon. I love smooth PEI. Sticks so well, specifically for ABS. I only use smooth PEI personally, yeah. Standoffs for, for a NEMA 17, not a NEMA 14. No, I think there's a printed spacer that's meant to go in there, and there's no reason to use it. Somewhere I have standoffs. Question is where? Question is where? No. I know I have them. I'll put them in a hardware box. Any thoughts on G10? I've never tried G10. I'm interested. Oh, NEMA 14 with the 17 millimeter length. I I, I kind of understood that's what you meant, but 
Uh, did Millennium Team ever follow up with the Fusion 360 counterbore tool? No, they didn't. You reminded me of that. Uh, yes, I, I know what you mean. But no, the problem is... Let me see if I can show you. It doesn't matter which length motor it is. The problem is... You see how much... Uh, see how much space is between the motor and the um, mount? The spacers they provided are 17 millimeter. So they're only big enough for that motor, not for this one, uh, not for, not to reach back here. So there needs to be a spacer between there and there, but I have standoffs big enough. There's no reason to do that. If I can find them. I know I have them. I know I have them. I just don't know where I put them because I was cleaning up and trying to find homes for things. And I forget where I found a home for standoffs. And I haven't totally sorted hardware yet. I haven't finished hardware. It's on the machine. Yes, we're almost. Sure did hope to make a lot more progress than I did. Story of these streams. Story of these streams. Ugh. Ay, 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 ay. Alright. Sunan fans. Belts. More fans. More fans. Hardware, but not the hardware I was looking for. Yeah, I have a bunch of 20 millimeter standoffs as well. That's exactly what I'm looking for is I know I have them. Nope, there's the auxiliary fan. I'm going to print a version of this in the cookie cat filament, hopefully today for this machine. Yeah, I have a bunch of them too. I just don't know where the heck they are right now. Guess I need more. If I'm not tripping over them, I don't have enough, right? If I'm not tripping over them, I don't have enough. That's how that works. That's how that works. I don't make up the rules. I didn't make up the rules. Nope. I don't see them. I don't see them. Dang it. I hid them from myself. I hid them from myself. I'll look at the toolbox one more time. Exactly the stuff I'm trying to avoid with the toolbox. exactly the issue I'm trying to avoid. They were on my desk for the longest time. Nope. I have zero idea. I spent a significant portion of time looking for things that I hid from myself. Yes, me too. That's why I got the toolboxes. And they have been a huge help. Just not quite there yet. <laughs> so I think this is where we're going to wrap it up, folks. I've got to go locate those. I've got to go make a phone call. Uh, we've been here for three hours now, which is what I kind of figured. I sure hoped we would have made it a heck of a lot further, but here we are. story of my streams we add we we add'd out for three hours so double t thank you very much get some rest uh we'll see about that hopefully so I'm, time to start the stream over i'm gonna edit the stream after this because the first couple minutes of it was some technical issues 
but uh, you demand. Thank you, Kim. At least the tool head's mounted. The tool head is mounted. It's looking good. We got that beautiful cookie cad filament going on there. Some fun stuff. We body doubled. I mean, that's that's all these streams really are. It's body doubling, exactly. You all you all keep me, uh, honestly, you all keep me on track so much more than, than I get on a regular work day. Because if it was a regular work day, I would spend the next half hour digging for those, those uh, standoffs. Then halfway through digging for those standoffs, I would forget what I was doing. Or I'd be like, oh, I want to look at that CAD design in Fusion real quick. I would find some other part I've been missing and I would side quest that way. These absolutely keep me on track a lot better. <laughs> so thank you, folks. I appreciate you. I, uh, yes, I am coming to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. I will see you there, Cookie Cat. Uh, I am coming. Thank you to our sponsors from LDO, Big Tree Tech, and Fabrico for getting me to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. Thank you very much to them. I will be at the Fabrico booth for... Um, a chunk of time, both Saturday and Sunday, doing meet and greets, chatting with folks, hanging out, talking shop. So I will be there. Time to switch over to Grant cooking. Yeah. Is the uni unicorn Voron coming? Uh, I had no intention of bringing it. Hit me up. Email me. Maybe we can we can figure that out. Maybe I can get it to you and you can bring it out there and we can put it at your booth or something. That's not a bad idea. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. So, all right, folks, I will see you all in the next one. I'm going to go grab some lunch and then come back to find those damn standoffs. See you all later.